Hello. Hey, everybody, and welcome Hello. to Young Screenwriters. Uh, we're an online community and resource for up and coming screenwriters. And today we are writing a movie on the spot with the amazing. I almost had it. Avi. Hello. <laughs> happy to be back. Always happy to have Avi. Um, so, oh, Avi, we lost you for a sec. Oh, no. That's not now good. you're back. It's just a glitch. It was just a, it was a minor glitch, mm. not a sign of things to come. Very, I'm sure very things minor. will be fine going forward. <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be so good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, today we're going to write a movie on the spot. And last time we did a horror movie, a monster horror with Avi about bee people. This time we were thinking, why not throw Avi a curveball and do a Western? Well, throw us all a curveball, really. I don't think any yeah, of us are. Of us are <laughs> we're yeah. all in this together, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, man. You... I think you like Winona Earp a lot, right, Alexi? I guess that is a Western. I guess that is. I think of it more as like a sci-fi that happens to be set in the West, like a sci-fi investigative thing. Right, but it plays with a lot of like tropes of like, you know, the, the gun fair. woman who's trying to hunt down like the X amount of baddies, you know, like. All right, you caught me. I like Western. No. <laughs> it's actually interesting. Yeah. What is a Western? is kind of like the most important question. I, we, we can jump into specific ideas, but like- No, I think are, we should start with this. There are things I think are interesting about the Western. Um, one I, being like kind of mythological. How so? You've, it's all about the archetypes. It's about the outsider from town. It's about like the, the it, they're all usually about like communities that are on the fringes of society that usually, and there's an outsider who comes to the community and somehow like protects them from some external force or an internal force. I don't know. That seems to be like the big thing. If not, there's a woman that doesn't do that. Um, Let's see. How long does it take to write a movie on the spot? Kia asked. Um, typically it takes us an hour and a half, right? Yeah. We're writing the full outline. So I'm going to send that link as soon as I grab it. Um, oh yeah, Westworld's kind of a, 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 a list, literally. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, but it's a twist. It's what it's a western with a twist, and then Godless is just straight up western, and that is so freaking good. And that plays a lot on like the sense of like what it means to be a member of a community, and like the different levels of like, you know, all the men died. Well, who are we? What do we do? Oh, it's so good. Go watch it. Go watch it. It's great. It's by the guy who did uh, Queen's Gambit. So, Avi, what? Scott Frank? Huh? That's Scott Frank and Godless? Yeah. Huh. Oh, it's really cool. Cool. If you haven't seen it, it's really good. I'll check it out. What is her name? Merritt Weaver is in it. And she is the best. So. I remember watching it in a mood where I really didn't want to watch a Western, and it won me over. Which says something. <laughs> that says a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Avi, what do you think of westerns? Do you like westerns? I do like westerns. It's they're not, you know, obviously they're not my favorite genre. I have very particular favorite, but I, I think, I think they're kind of wonderful. Like, like in a in a sense of so many genres, I feel are kind of oriented around emotions uh, in different ways. And are we losing? Are you getting my hair? We're losing you a little. For a second. Hey, out. You guys getting me? Am I here? Yep. You sound like a, a robot. Oh, no. Yeah. It's happening again. Now you're back. You know. You're back. Okay. To... What were you just saying? <sighs> you Honestly, I think, that, <laughs> I think that the thing is, is that when you speak, you have to make it like short and concise because I think it like starts uploading and that's when it F's up. So it's like, if you can do us like little like Avi bursts of wisdom. All right. You get my bursts. <laughs> okay. You'll tell me, you'll tell me if something's going on. So I think of Westerns, I think of frontiers. I think of people trying to sort of expand their way of life into a lawless area. Um, and it usually these stories kind of come down to 
operating within sort of codes of conduct, right? Whereas there's mm -hmm. there's there's somebody who tries to impose rules, sometimes rules that people enjoy, sometimes rules they don't. There's an outsider who sometimes is there to disrupt the rules or is there to restore them. Um, it, it, it's it's sort of this, when, when there isn't a structure already in place, um, you know, and you ha yourself have to kind of create that structure, what does it do to you and those you love? And I think that's, it's interesting, it's malleable. Um, it can be optimistic, it can be incredibly grim. Um, and it it kind of it kind of lends itself to other genres like Winona Earp, right? Like that is that sort of fantasy genre world with demons and whatnot. But it is still this sense of there's someone there wearing the black hat who's causing trouble, and you know we gotta we gotta put a put a stop to that trouble because trouble is gonna tear us all apart. Um, there's nobody else who's gonna catch us if we fall apart. And you know it, it's. It, it probably says something that for the first few decades of Westerns, they were these sort of optimistic paragons of good versus evil. And then they kind of became more shades of gray when, you know, we kind of got more into the sense of the law isn't necessarily a sort of clean good versus evil thing for everybody it touches. Um, tell some interesting stories in Westerns. That was fantastic. That was more insightful than anything I've ever thought about Westerns before. So <laughs> it reminds me of, you know, I think that I was reading about Westerns today because I was trying to find the tropes that we could play on. Um, and one of them is that, or one of the things I learned is that it's like one of the oldest genres that almost predates, like it was happening concurrently with the frontier. Like it was always kind of imagined as like a, a reflective thing, but it was very much like alongside uh, the the like Western frontier, which I thought was interesting. And then also the first like anti heroes. I mean, it's hard. I mean, pretty much everything you would have done in that era would have been like one of the first because it was like for American cinema, at least. Um, yeah, yeah. It's interesting because you could say that westerns predate the concept of the American West by centuries, thousands of years even. Like, I'm thinking about certain Bible stories where you just have like clans of Israelites before there's any sort of, um, you know, systems in place other than just these families, you know, sort of in a lawless land coming into conflict with other locals mm -hmm. and determining how do you handle this? Do you do it through an honor code or do you just go to war? Like I'm thinking of like the story of Jacob and his 12 sons and his daughter Dina and like, you know, they live in together in harmony and whatnot. And then an outsider comes and steals Dina away. And like, you know, the patriarch wants to, you know, negotiate for, for her safety. And, you know, the brother's like, no, we have to wipe them all out. Like that's, I, you could say that's, that's a Western, just, you know, pre-West. That's interesting. So would you say that the American, like early Western is like, takes on sort of elements of like the larger West Western with a capital W and made it more of like uh, an American mythology of like good versus evil stories. Because I like, I can see that in the superhero genre. Hmm. Yeah. Like, it, I feel like it's turned like the Western used to be that before oh, this that is change. A, here's a quick note. Westerns can also be persons for person versus nature, which is why in some respects, what is that one? Outstar Galactica, maybe? Oh. Yeah. Good catch. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely something to that. He's a Caravan, yeah. Yeah, and I so I just set, pulled this up, too. <clears throat> I'm going to grab it. I was looking at the tropes of um, Westerns so that we could decide which ones we want to play with. And real quick, for everybody who hasn't done this with us before, um, to show you basically what this process is going to be, um, let me make sure Avi and Adam have the editable link. Hmm. Sorry, I'm grabbing it. I'm having internet issues whenever I try to open a new tab. Oh no, okay. Well, I'm gonna share it on my screen too, so you don't, you don't need to. Um, okay. So here we go. So this is how we build a 
movie together. So this is called the tentpole document. It shows the most important um, tentpole moments of a script, particularly as they relate to your protagonist. And so it's like a puzzle. So basically we're gonna put it together with you and in the end we'll have the complete outline for a full length movie. And typically we start with some associations up top. So just like brainstorming, trying to get some stuff on the page. And then we start flowing into figuring out all these details together, usually starting with like a protagonist and a problem and that sort of thing. So can I ask a question of what we wanna do specifically? Do we wanna make the choice of setting it in the American West or do we wanna like go to another time and place? I wanted it to be a Western with a twist. So I guess the twist could be somewhere else or it could be anything. Here, this is interesting. How about a Western with no violence, like a group of followers from Gandhi that appear in the far West? Yeah, violence is, is easy though. <laughs> <laughs> violence is an easy, no, no, but that's interesting. Think about it. Um, yeah. If, if, if we do set it in the American West, if we could do something with trains, that would be very cool. Yeah, I was, let mm. me show you what I found real quick. I want to pull up this awesome website that you, more people are probably familiar with than I was called TV Tropes, just so we can start getting some idea generation going. These are characters that commonly appear in Westerns. Also, I didn't know why they were called Spaghetti Westerns, so I looked it up. Italy. 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 I figured everyone else knew that fun fact, but I was like, I'm going to learn that fun fact. And then when I found the answer that it was just made in Italy, I was like, everyone else knows that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying I'm enjoying gay cowboy over there. Yeah, Apparently that's a good very, one. Very prominent trope. They must be. Oh, can we say gay cowboy plus trains? We could do that. Does that work? <laughs> Is that loose enough of a prompt? <laughs> what do you all think? What do you all think? Gay, um, gay cowboy plus trains. I think it's a start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. I mean, this is, did you know that a quarter of cowboys were black? It was one of the few jobs they could get after being free. Interesting. That's interesting. I believe it. That makes perfect sense to me. I knew that they were not all white. Right. But I did not know that. You know, um, I, was reading, I was reading some stuff about uh, like sort of whaling ship culture. And the idea that, uh, you know, when you're out at sea, whatever sort of social structures exist on land don't necessarily apply. Because once you're out at sea, everybody just relies on each other. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I read a screenplay that had um, one of the characters was an escaped slave who escapes onto a boat. And everyone's like, we know you're an escaped slave and welcome aboard. You know, you're here. Let's let's work together. Um, and I feel like that's something to be said about Westerns also, the idea of we're all essentially out at sea right now. Yeah. It's very piratey. That's like pirate culture. Is that like, yeah, you could have, there was a lot of, there was several pirates who were women throughout the ages and like all around the world, not just like the European pirates that tend to be prominent, just like right. everywhere. There tends to be intense women on boats, killing right. people and taking things. Which so, is kind of fun. <laughs> here, here's, I mean, I always try to push things to be self-contained, and I, I know that's a bad habit, but, like, what if it was, like, one train ride, and there's a train robbery gang, and he has to protect something that matters to him while they're being robbed? So it's, so he's on the train, or she's on the train. Someone's on the train, and then it's being robbed, and they have to protect something? That's where my gut's going, but like I understand that that's also just like a bad habit of putting things like like I, I like to compress things personally. But what do you guys think? Well, we're getting hey, a lot of votes for sci-fi. Oh, sci-fi. Okay. Yeah, Adam, would you would you describe your idea as Die Hard in a train robbery? Uh, I guess <laughs> I guess that's kind of that's that's a way you could characterize it. Sure. Um, <laughs> But you could also sort of like I like I like train robbery gangs that idea like I love the idea of like, um, you know, there's there's a something with a finite destination and parameters, and that there's a culture around like manipulating that journey. Mm. It could be whaling, you know. <laughs> whaling, yeah. There we go. You know, I, I'm thinking about one of the more common tropes of westerns that we haven't really talked about. 
which sort of has one of the more problematic origins, you know, the idea of like, you know, we are the, the you know, pilgrims on the frontier and we have to fight the other, right? Right, right. You know, which tends to be categorized sort of tropally as like the savages, you know? And I feel like even if stories kind of transplant that trope onto another group or create another group other than Native Americans, which is where it sort of is take, taken from, it's always going to kind of draw the attention I'm gonna wave Avi when when the, your thing starts cutting out. Just so we just know. lost a sentence of what you just said. Yeah. Most okay. Of you, I was, yeah. Okay, so the, end, the, end, the ending of what I was saying is, I wonder if there's a way to disassociate that trope, you know, of like the savage other that we have to attack, you know, from the problematic origins of it without it just being that thing with a different name. Well, we could have the protagonist be, um, you know, one of those people like, it depends what if we're doing sci-fi or not because it feels like a lot of people want i'm down for sci-fi but that doesn't necessarily mean like in the future or on an alien planet or something well people it could just be saying, one sci-fi element well this came up a couple times what do you all what is oh. the audience think of mm. time traveling train um, okay like back to the future <laughs> yeah or it's like you know a space train or a train across the climate ravaged Atlantic. So some sort of train in the future is just taking place. So yeah, exactly, Alejandro. These are the questions we're kind of playing with right now, but I think we've locked on train. So let's just write down yeah. train. So we're doing something with uh, trains. Um, the question is, do we want to do sci do we, do we want it to be time traveling? And do we want it to be on earth? Because I feel like we shouldn't do an alien world and time traveling is what I'm trying to say. Like, if we're doing time travel, we should stay on Earth. I agree. Yeah, that's like mixing your your tropes. So we want, or you know, so we want to do. Oh, time traveling train that gets stranded in time and space. That's interesting. <laughs> Here's the problem with time travel: that, that like you have to really work out the logistical reality of what you're doing. Um, we can do that, but um, yeah. We would have to come up with a few different times that we wanted to visit if it was like, if it was right. that kind of time travel, you know? Okay. Let's see. So travel to a Mars colony, traveling through space. They're traveling through the history of Western films. So it'd be community, Western. <laughs> mm. Let's see. Um, okay, we need, let's lock in a decision, everybody. So we like train, we're doing train. And now we're trying to figure out where they are. Are we gonna declare Earth? Yes. Okay, Earth. Yeah, I, I wanna do Earth. Okay, Earth. And Avi, then... should we do, oh, sorry, Avi or Lexi, should we, should we do time travel? Hmm. Part of me wants to do dimensions. Ooh. So, like different realities. My question is, how do we limit that, that though? How do we limit that to be so in a way that like, so that means something very specific? Well, let's say, I'm the spitball because I'm thinking in terms of pioneer. Let's say we, we have characters who are trying to go to a new place and they have a train that is supposed to take them there in this to a different dimension, but it doesn't get them all the way there and they end up in this sort of spot in between. Like there, you could play with that, like creating a society there, you know, which in fact rule is sort of between places. Like, like, that's not necessarily the thing I'm just spitballing, but I've been wondering if, because we, we know space, we know time, but I don't know if dimensions as pioneers, you know, as, as Frontier has really been played up as much yet. So here's a note sure. from Alejandro. Dimension piercing train. I like dimension piercing train. That's really cool. Big heist ends up with the train stranded at the great American frontier. Um, I just like the, I liked the beginning, like the, the description that it's so, a dimension. So wait, wait, I like this a lot because what if it doesn't start in, like what if it starts in a way more technological rea like reality and it gets stranded in like 1840s of our reality? That's there's a way to make that work if we limit it, like if we if we, we if we limit it geographically in scope. 
I think. Like, oh, Michelle, we don't want them to be like, oh, we traveled into now we have to deal with all these new problems in this uh, Western world. You know, like I, I don't want to go that way. Look at this. Well, it, it could crash land in like a frontier town, right? Look at this uh, real quick. Avi, isn't this like that show you like? Yes, Infinity Train is a great TV show, and it sounds a lot like that. Yeah. Uh, it's a great series on HBO Max, highly recommend, animated. So I was thinking, so here's a version I was thinking. What if it was like a typical Western, and then you know how there's like those, they have like the switches that changes the direction of the train? What if mm -hmm. it's something there? Like when they get to like the switch, there's something happening where the dimensions split at the switch. I what? don't know what that would mean, but I was just thinking about that as like a starting point. Like, I like the idea that it's broken and they have to deal with that. But like, where are they trying to go and why? I think really solves all the issues of this. Like, are they trying to escape something for a better life? Because that's very much like the pioneer, like dream, that's the, ambition of the pioneer dream i was Abby. think oh, oh Abby. Oh, alexa you can you can say yours if you want oh. i kind of like the idea of it not of it being like a very simple core like this gay cowboy person is accompanying i guess that'd sort of like make him like a ranger like a texas ranger accompanying the the train that has like something important on it across the country and it has to get to the destination and then something goes really, really wrong in the middle. Okay, What's thought, 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 thought. Okay, let's say this is a train from a reality that's very technologically advanced and they are transporting uh, people on this train from one reality to another because that's, you know, that's how people travel in that universe. And there's a character on this train who is delivering something important, could be the gay cowboy. There is a robbery that coincides with the junction where they have to hit, you know, pull a switch that sends it to the reality they're going to. The train derails, crash lands in a frontier town, and they have to figure out a way to get the train up and going again to go where they're going while still dealing with the robbers who are still with them and this frontier town that could be our other who see them as a threat. So is in that version, is it that the world just has um, different dimensions and that's just accepted? So this isn't like abnormal? It's accepted by the characters on this train, not by the people in the frontier town who are just like our reality, 1840s frontier Utah, who are like, what is, what incarnation oh. is all this? So this is like a future person has a mission. Yep. Okay, yeah. what do you all, what does the audience think? I think that sounds good. That simplifies stuff. So can you, can you clarify where they're going specifically? Let's say they're from, I saw uh, my brother Akiva commented, um, Cyber Utah. They're from right. Cyber Utah, alternate reality Utah, and they're going to um, Cyber Utah 27B, just a different reality. You know, they, they have family there, you know, people on the train going right, to vacation, right. or they're going to the bank to deposit their cyber dollars. Um, and while they're on their cyber train, a robber disrupts it, it, at the juncture, it crashes off the tracks, lands in our reality in the 1840s on a frontier town in normal 1840s Utah. Characters on this train are like, we need to get our train going. Our main character, who's the gay cowboy, is I need to get my thing to Cyber Utah 27B soon. Um, so we have to get this train going. They have to work together with the robber who threw them off the track, and they have to contend with the fact that this frontier town are like, what incarnation are these devils? We have to attack them. Right. So I love, that. I, I, I love that. I love that. I'm all on board. My one, I, my one thought is how can we like put a ticking talk on there where they have to fix the train before X happens? Like, does it related to the cargo? Maybe they, they can't like be out of their own time or outside of their destination. Like they can't like, there's a, there's, Maybe there's like a limit or something. Like they can't um, be, they're not, because they're not from here, they can't yeah. be here for too long. Maybe, or maybe you could go with the thing that gay cowboy has to deliver, has to be delivered within 24 hours. Or maybe, right, right. or maybe this train, if they can't 
fix it within 24 hours, its engine will They're be stuck. irreparably damaged and blow they'll up. Be stuck. You know? <laughs> or, and they'll, or they'll be stuck in fucking 18th century, which is terrible. <laughs> yeah. I like that phrase, by the way, ticking talk. Ticking talk, yeah, ticking talk. It's the, yeah, it's the talk. The talk. It's, that, that, it's like the... <laughs> <laughs> but can the t tick? I don't know. Yeah. Here's a version. <laughs> um, the uh, train's damaged nuclear... Uh, the damage trains to nuclear hyper, hyper, oh my God, the thingy, the engine will blow up if they don't repair it in time. That's and, very um, aliens. But, aliens. Oh, yeah. this is fun. Uh, something like Wakanda's vibranium that powers the train, but it will fade over time. I so, love that. so if the engine isn't running soon, it will fade completely. So they won't be able to, so they'll be stuck. I like that more than an explosion because then we can make it more about like the, oh my oh, God, we don't want to be here. Like, we're from cyber Utah. We don't want to be in 18th century, you know, whatever. It makes it less action, more Western. And I want to know what gay cowboy protagonist is trying to deliver. He needs a lockbox. He has a lockbox that we don't reveal what it is until the midpoint. I must get it there in 24 hours or else, or else um, my family in Utah 27B can't buy their ranch, cyber ranch. But it should be something that's bad for the other passengers. Like, what if it's like something that like when the other passengers find out what it is, they're like, we can't let you deliver that. Oh, I like this too, that they become un like, I think it should also just like be dangerous that they're in the past. Like they weren't planning on getting stuck there. So now they're, I mean, is this too complicated to say that like it's unhealthy for them in general? Like um, you're going to get friggin' like smallpox or here's whatever. An idea, here's an idea to raise the stakes. So let's say it is true that if they can't repair this train in time, it will just never work and they'll be stranded. But they learn very quickly, they've contracted a disease from the locals that's very normal for 1840s Utah, but not for cyber Utah. And they're like, we don't have an immunity to this. If we don't get on this train, we won't be able to get our cyber injections and handle this. Because there's definitely a, like a, a, you know, a Western thing of, Western thing, American history thing of, you know, polio blankets and whatnot. Right. Yeah. I, I um, like saying, I like calling it a Western thing. <laughs> here, real quick, I love this. I'm going to start, fi I'm filling in some of the details here. So we have a dimension piercing train on earth. What's it doing? It was, they were delivering something. Delivering what? Adam, you said something. Uh, a lockbox. And we find out what it is at the midpoint. And the idea it's not is good. It's, it's not good for the other passengers. You know, I just saw a movie, I won't say which because I don't want to spoil in case anybody decides to watch it, where a character has a box and is very mysterious. Like, you can't open the box. Whatever you do, the box must be protected at all costs. And the question is, what's in the box? And the midway point, they open the box and inside is a baby. Oh. Which was an interesting thing. I don't think we can do that because it's been done. But no, we shouldn't do that. But I love that. I love the tone of that. And I love... I love that it's not like fucking like space space gold, you know. <laughs> it's nothing. It was the box itself. <laughs> Twist. <laughs> oh it's, man! It's All an right. entire universe. He's actually carrying Nuta in a box. Oh my god! <laughs> so should we? So can I, can I just sort of? Well, real, can we? Yeah. Let's write the, what, let's write out what we know so that I don't lose. Oh, I thought it. we already had. I thought we already did. I wasn't looking. The dimension piercing train delivering. Oh, I, like, the I like that from uh, the Power Bunny. That inside the box is J.J. Abrams. <laughs> J.J. Abrams, <laughs> yay! So they're delivering a mysterious lockbox to a different dimension, and they like so they're so from Cyber Utah. Where to? Where are they trying to take it? Uh, cy cyber Nuta, but a different, gen different oh, oh. dimension. Cyber oh. Frisco. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, sh it should be just like, I think we don't necessarily, we could just like maybe like a new a new life of some kind. Like, like what in this world where you could go between different dimensions, like what is it about the dimension they're going to that they'd be excited about? Well, where do people try to go in Westerns to create a new life right gold gold mining towns right yeah um so a resource rich place <laughs> and call it the gold standard <laughs> a, yeah. uh, a, a dimension yeah. where bitcoin hadn't been mined yet right 
<laughs> Boomtown. <laughs> oh my god. Let's see. I love the idea of at some point in the future we just start putting cyber in front of names. Yep. <laughs> Washington District of Cyber. I like that. I like that. <laughs> oh, so they're starting off. But like, so if it's a train and it's going to the same place, then it's not like traveling if, like if it's forward. another dimension. Oh, cyber no, going Christo, to another dimension. Cyber Frisco is a different dimension from Cyber Nuta. Yeah. D different dimension. <laughs> what a concept. Cyber Frisco. So. But but uh, let, let's answer Ultra why. Frisco. But let, let's answer why. Because like, what is it about the new dimension? that they want to get to? Like, is it like financial? Is it like, oh, financial opportunity? Is it um, physical safety? Is it um, like, what's the nature of the new life? Because I, I like the idea that it's like, it's aspirational, that it's not um, what if it's like What if it's like the hub of Western civilization? Like everything else where they're traveling through are frontier towns, but Cyber Frisco is where the law is. It's where the money is. It's where the jobs are. It's where the people are. Um, you know, it's essentially safety. It's home, whereas everything else is dangerous. Oh, real quick, let's let's look at these questions because I think that this will help us get to it. So first, your brother said, "Why would you deliver it on a train? Train to me means a tons of different cars. Do they have cars full of freight cargo?" I like the idea of there are different passengers on the train going for different reasons who aren't yes. our protagonist. Like there are people who are going to visit family, or there are people who are going for to start a new life because they're secretly you know, criminals who have changed their identities. Um, you have uh, vacationers, you have extremely wealthy people, you have extremely poor yeah, people. I love that. So that means that to address Alejandro's question, if it's so, if it's in the future, why are they still delivering an important lockbox on a train? I think it's because it's personal, right? This yeah. isn't like a big thing. This is like this one person personally wants to take a lockbox to a different place and it's per and it's important to them so it's like you hopping on a plane to bring something to somewhere that matters to you you can't trust anybody else with it if you want to get it from point a to point b you have to take it there yourself yeah and then this is another one that's interesting um it might just be convenient like maybe one meter in this dimension is 50 meters in their dimension so it's faster to pop through so that's that could be interesting. So like if they like are taking, like okay. they have to travel through the old West to get to Frisco and then. Oh, here's an idea. Break. Here's mm -hmm. an idea. They, to get on this train, they have to get rid of certain things and objects that would be compromising in the new dimension. Like there are certain things that maybe aren't, don't exist that aren't, that aren't, um, aren't allowed and like they, so they have to scrub and like, you can only wear certain types of clothing, certain types of brands or whatever. And the thing in the box is something personal from the other dimension. And by bringing it, he'll cause like problems. It's contraband. It's contraband, yeah. But it's personal to him. It's not like something like big about it. it, it, it I think making it like an object that shouldn't be transported compromises people's safety because of what it is. But the thing that it is, is personal. like a maybe photographs or something. What if the laws are so strict about contraband because sure, some contraband is just like a, a brand of cigarettes that exists in one reality and not another, but some contraband is like weaponry. The, it's because the law is so concerned about the kind of stuff that could get brought through. They have really strict laws where if somebody on a train is caught with contraband, everyone on the train is punished. Oh, I love that. That's great. They like because blow then, up then your train. Then it's not like, oh, a photograph's going to cause like a explosion. It's, it's oh, the law. we're all going to be punished by law enforcement when we get here. And that's interesting. I like that. I love the idea that it's something like really personal, like that's my mem memorabilia. Right. I like that. I like that. So... They're trying to get from one place to another, from one dimension to another. The train is a type of travel where it's mass transit. It is delivering you through different dimensions. You take the junctures. It makes life easier, you know, because, you know, wormhole logic. <laughs> and something, there's a robbery on the train. Are the robbers trying to get the lockbox? Do they know what's inside the lockbox? Do they think it's money? 
I well, think I the forgot about the robbers. <laughs> well, that's that's that should be the inciting incident, maybe that the yeah. robbery starts. The uh, robbery kicks the train, like it causes the train to derail at the wrong moment, which is what crashes the train. So, what are the robbers after? Is it coincidental, or is it related to this lockbox? Like we heard something was being transported, and we think it must be valuable. Oh, this is interesting. I think the answer is yes, and. I think they should be like, that's a target. But usually when in, in the West, when train, or at least I've learned from Red Dead Redemption 2, when you're robbing a train, you're robbing all of the passengers and mm. everything is, is like, oh, that lockbox is going to be an extra bonus. Oh, thought, 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 Wait, thought, thought, thought. I have a, oh, I have one too. What if the robbers, we make it really complicated because the robbers are like, vigilante people who want to steal medicine from the train and change the course of history. Or like then the time travel is different. But dimensions, if you're moving into right, the right. old West, then we're already doing that. I right? like that. I like that. I don't, I, I'm struggling to make it fit. I feel like it's a different idea. Um, I, I, I like the idea. I like, I think there's a way to change it though, to make it fit. Um, I like the idea that the robbers are politically motivated somewhat, but yeah. Maybe the robbers are robbing to finance something <laughs> that is important to them that is political. Look at this. I like this. What if the, the what if they're stealing the train itself? The dimension piercing train. I have an idea. That's, that's kind of cool. What? What's up? I have an idea. So let's say Let's just re rewind a bit and just assume that they are robbing the train and that maybe they're trying to rob because they're trying to finance their politically motivated activities, which we could develop more later. But let's say it is very normal for these robberies to happen and for people to just hand over their stuff. The thing that causes the train to derail is that when they come to our protagonist and demand the lockbox, the protagonist fights back, yeah. which nobody does. And that fight causes the derail. I love that. I love that. Um, here's another idea. So I think, yes, they shouldn't be stealing the train. They should be stealing a part of the train that they can escape with. So like an engine or course thing, then, and then like one compartment. So would it make the train unable to move if they Yeah, succeed? so they'd be stranding everybody else. So that could be like an objective, like they're trying to like, you know, escape with like the, the engine. So real quick, Marlon, the point Can in I, uh, this, what, what we said so far, the point of the dimension piercing train is to take, is to literally go to a different dimension. So like you, you're in Cyber Newtah and maybe it sucks. Maybe Cyber Newtah sucks. And so a lot of people save up money to go to Cyber Frisco, which is like a better dimension. And so the people on this train are like, well, but then you wouldn't want to rob it. You'd want to rob it unless you, well. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, let's yeah. I like the idea of stealing the train or part of the train, but I'm wondering if that's something that should be later. Like if right now in this oh, point of the story, sure. it for should sure. just be a normal robbery. But later I, in the story when thinking, they are stranded. I was thinking stranded, like second act break. Right. I was thinking like when they're stranded, end of act if, two. If the robbers are like, we can't. We want to escape this frontier town. Um, oh, by the way, I have a separate top thought. I'll get that in a second. But like, we want to escape this frontier town. We need to get out of here. We want to steal, like, the back half of the train, which we believe has like the engine that could kickstart the dimensionality thing. But if they do that, they leave everybody else behind, um, and there could be a conflict there, and that could lead to the train being even more damaged or something. But I just, I just had a different thought. I'm sorry, this led to a different thought. Definitely. What if the threat, the threat of being in this town, right? Like, I like the idea of the train, like, will stop working and they'll be stranded there forever or whatever. What if it's, what if it's this? When a train derails, it only takes a few hours for Central to send rescue. And Central is law enforcement. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And there are some people who are like, let's just wait for law enforcement to show up. But the, both the robbers and our protagonists are like, we do not want to wait for that. That's great. I love that. I really like that. I think that solves 
It, it also makes it more interesting because there are multiple actors with different agendas, which can make like act two more interesting because if we have the a law enforcement literally showing up and they like run things by the book, we can have, we can sort of understand maybe the more political nature of the robbers who started this. I, I, I love your idea of the robbers try to take the lockbox and it's the interaction that derails the train. Yeah. Right, is that what so, you said? Because then, then our protagonist is part of it. Like the, our protagonist right. does an action right. that is part of the reason why they're stranded instead of just sort of being one of the hapless passengers who we happen to be focusing on. Are the robbers aware? What if the robbers aren't? So, okay, here's a thought. Ready? Ready. So this train is doing what somebody mentioned earlier, which is basically like to get through to a different dimension, you basically travel looking like a semi-normal train in the West for a, some time, like an hour or something. And then you go out and you're in Cyber Frisco. Is okay. that weird? Is that hard to justify? And then- I, what, like, I, I like it actually. And then what if they- you hmm? that? That. So basically like they use the old West as a bridge. So they're in yeah. Cyber Newtaw they take the train and it looks like an old west stagecoach thing going through so the old the old west and then they get out in cyber frisco oh so so it's sort of like we have tunnel. to go back we have to go into this pocket dimension of 18th century america to like run for two hours to build a momentum to make the jump to cyber frisco it's, it's a right? tunnel it's a yeah. tunnel between point a and point b so what if that's this why is they're just all a total like old timey people, right? So they literally part of uh, like the they in in the ramp up period they have to only have stuff that could exist in that time, like they mm -hmm. can't have anything, and that's what the co contraband is like causes problems. And then maybe they all even have to like dress like that time in case something goes wrong and they get stuck. That'd be kind of fun. Right. And so no, then what they're if all dressed up, yeah. And then what if they actually get like train robbed? Like what if the robbers are old West? Ooh, I, I, actually. That's interesting. Actually, actually, I kind of love that. Like, let's say you have people going from one dimension to another and they're following protocol. And you know, like because it's dimension travel, you can't bring contraband. And they're, you know, they're all dressed up in the 1840s to be inconspicuous. Nobody expects a normal ass train robbery. <laughs> And, yeah. you know, and the protocol is you let it happen because, like, it's all insured by Cyber Frisco, you know, central, tech, you know, law agency. Um, but you have somebody on that train who has something who he cannot, he cannot let it get stolen. And they just derail. And maybe instead of, then instead of being in a frontier town where they are stranded, they're stranded with the robbers who are the frontier people, essentially. And maybe to justify it, we have, we eventually find out that one of the leaders is from the, like a dimensional person who like orchestrated it that way. I, with, like, I a band. personally think that that complicates things too much. I love the idea of the robbers getting involved and them not being um, <laughs> of the time or, or them being of the time. But I, 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 I want there to be also like conflict between the passengers that's more than you shouldn't have brought that contraband. I have a thought. I have a yeah. thought building on what Alexi was saying. Mm -hmm. Let's say, because we have all manner of passengers, like, you know, first class steerage, um, let's say there's somebody who, like, just for now, let's just call him Mr. Monocle, right? Like, <laughs> he has a top hat, he has a monocle, he's very rich. He, there is something on this train that he very much wants because it helps him politically, it helps him financially, I don't know, something to do with his company or the water in his cyber town, I don't know, what, whatever. You reveal down the line that he had tipped off the robbers to rob the train because he was gonna use them to get that thing and then nobody would know he was involved. The robbers might not even know that he's a cyber guy but he could be behind this all just because he's trying to get that other thing on this train and that can come out right. later. And That's kind of what I'm, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that. And I also- I, Yeah, think Alexi, like I think, I, think, I think your idea is a very solid one. I think that, because that's, because so far everything we've been talking about is first half stuff. And this is something that could come out later. 
and just sort of world building, not world building, but like uh, another act one thing, not to get bowed down too much, is like he, who is he bribed to get this contraband on the train? It could be like the conductor, if we want to simplify like, things. The, the, ticket, the ticket guy or the conductor, like that should be a character who 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 looked the other way to be like, yeah, okay, you bribe, but when shit gets real, that's, you know, a whole thing. Like somebody should know He's about- a switch. He's a switch yeah. character. He's yeah, exactly. He's a friend when it's expedient. <laughs> so the robbers are just, appear to be Old West, regular train robbers. Right. But what if they actually are, right? They actually are. No, and they, they should. No idea. They have yeah, no I mean, idea that the stuff was from a. We're, a, a, we're all finger. on the same. We're all on the same page yeah. there. And okay. I would love the idea of they rob the train, and it's weird that not a single one of them has anything of value, like. Yeah. You know, but like they, they're just in clothing. They're all like wearing costumes. They don't have actual money, or actual. They don't have like real gold watches. Like everything is, like that. That would be it. They do a robbery and like. Oh, what, what incarnation is this plastic card thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and at, at first the, uh, oh no, I don't know. I, I okay. yeah. So, okay. So I think we have enough. So the train is supposed to respond. Honestly, they should all be pretty stunned because like probably the monocle guy would have told them a trick to actually like get a hold of the train in a way that shouldn't have really been possible. Right, like I don't know something. They they somehow got the, on the train, and everyone on the train is like very shocked, and is supposed to give everything over. Right? Is that how they're responding? Yeah, it's all insured. All the legal stuff is insured. Oh, that's a good catch. Okay. Um, yeah, and so we don't know. So the real bad guy is Monocle Man, right? Or whatever, Mr. Monocle. I, I love, he, he's kind of like the CEO in T Train to Busan. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Mr. Monocle be a woman so, who's called sure. Mr. Monocle? Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's a, a thing that would work. It's kind of like Mr. Wednesday. Um, yes. Yeah. But I kind of like the idea of, like, like the guy in Train to Busan, right, is just trying to survive, but in a dickish way. But, like, this person, I feel, is, like, As a real the agenda. villain from Chinatown. Like, the villain from Chinatown, you know, like, right, or, right, or right, from, right. like, like, like Monster Inc., you know, the boss from Monster Inc. Yeah. <laughs> Who has, like, a secret thing going on. So, or Zootopia. So, real quick, sure. let's, let's do a recap of what we know. This is animated now. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we know is that our setting is there's a dimension piercing train on earth and basically it's going to take people. It travels between cyber Utah and other places, but in particular, this one's going from cyber Utah to cyber Frisco. And did we want cyber Utah to be bad? Like, are they like refugees on this train? Uh, I, I should be bad and good. Like, it's just like, a, there are some people who are trying to make a better life for themselves. Some people are just coming back from a trip. So I love the idea, like different people are on, um, this is a, this is a civilian train, you know, it's not. Okay. So it's not like notably worse than cyber. Cyber, cyber Utah resembles Appalachia. Right. And, and they're going to the big city or, or the mid, the moderate city. I see a note here, by the way, that could be interesting um, uh, from uh, Vishnu S where like the train is made of gold. What if, they're, they're, so they're all stranded, right? And the passengers are like, oh no, we're stranded. We, like the rescue is gonna have to happen. And the robbers are like, I don't know what's going on. This is not a normal train. Let's say if you have characters who are like, we cannot wait for law enforcement to show up. We need to get this train going immediately. I feel like an obstacle would be if the robbers are dismantling the train and the robbers might be dismantling the train if they realize that underneath the facade that looks like a regular train, it actually is like made of gold because it's like hyperconductive. So maybe Mr. Monocle doesn't even care about that, but like, like Mr. Monocle wanted something else, but then yeah. the robbers are like, wow, gold. Yeah. And start pulling the train apart. And that's an obstacle. Yeah. Okay. What does Mr. Monocle want? Hmm. But wait, but let's, first of all, let's, let's actually 
go to I think it's time to go to our gay cowboy protagonist. Well, real quick, we didn't get to finish the recap. Just okay, to, okay. okay. Real quick recap. Okay. So the mention piercing train on Earth. It's driving from futuristic cyber Utah, which is kind of like a rural Ozark Appalachia E place, going through the old west as a bridge, and then gonna end up in a dimension that's like big city cyber Frisco. Um so it's not that it breaks anymore. So they're using as a bridge. Okay. So there's some, our protagonist is on the train with a contraband lockbox. They're not supposed to have this lockbox, uh, but it has something personal inside that matters to them a lot. And it compromises everybody on the train if they're caught with it because it's not allowed in Cyber Utah. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, not explode. Good not catch. Explode. Um, what? So then, as they're going through Cyber Utah, or as they're going through the Old West, they are attacked by truly like old Old Western regular train robbers who are gonna like loot the train. Um, they don't know this yet, but the Old West robbers were tipped off by Monocle Man, who is somebody from Cyber Utah who wants something specific off the train. Maybe I had, like, I had an idea too. Oh. <laughs> you go first, Avi. My <laughs> idea is kind of noirish of like, there's somebody on this train who is bringing evidence to like a court case against Mr. Monocle, and Mr. Monocle's hoping that this evidence could disappear. You just you just stole my idea, Avi. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. Mine was he. They wanted this robbery to happen so as an excuse to disappear to go off the record. Because in, this is a world where everyone is so traced, you know, like like this weird like interdimensional tunnel is one of the few places you can sort of get recorded oh. as dying. Wait, so Monocle Man is on the train? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I missed that. That's good. Oh, Monocle, Monocle Man is a, is tra is a passenger. Yeah, we think he's or she is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, a like, false, like mentor, a false mentor. Make them a false mentor. Yes. But yeah, I mean, like, I I just kind of like the idea of there's something that they want off the train and it's just like, it's person like it helps them. They have no idea that Mr. Lockbox is going to screw it all up. Yeah. So does, is the, is the Lockbox the evidence? Uh, no. no, it should no. be. I, I love this idea uh, right here where maybe it's a, like a hologram message from a loved one or something. The lockbox? Yeah. Yeah. So the, so, and I mean, that would also up the stakes of the robbers taking it because if the robbers took it, it would like ruin history and all of them would get screwed. Well, right? but, like but not, not time travel. It would just ruin this dimension, which none of them would give a shit about. It's like in Rick and Morty, they constantly go to other dimensions just to like ruin them arbitrarily because it doesn't affect. I was just nobody, from, nobody from Cyber Utah or Cyber Frisco cares what yeah. happens to 1840s Utah. Yeah. Okay, that works. Yeah. I was trying to think about if we could raise the stakes on what's in the lockbox. Because honestly, if it's like just a message from well, a loved one. No, 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 no but if it, it's, it's a message from a loved one, but you can't bring stuff from the previous dimension to the new dimension. So they would get flagged by law enforcement and none of all of the passengers as a punishment would not be allowed to go. Alternate idea. Yeah. Gay cowboy's loved one committed a crime and faked his death and is living in a different dimension. And this is a message from, from that person. And if law enforcement found this, they would know, oh, he's still alive. We have to go get him and arrest him. Mm. So it's a breakup message. <laughs> but it's, but I, I, I think the reason why the protagonist wants to hold on to it superficially is like they want like something I like them that it compromised. I like the version though where it compromises someone that they love. Yeah. Like it's like a loved it's a message from a loved one that is sentimental but would also reveal where they are. But do we want to still do the law enforcement will punish everybody? Like why would somebody else give a shit about this yeah, message? Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be like that the the robbers, I imagine that it's literally the train robbers coming up and they're like give us your box like the old West ones. And then he's like, or she's like, no. 
And then they're like, give us your box. And then it's like this whole thing and the train gets derailed. And the, and the, and the, well, yeah, that's the inciting incident. Um, right. Yeah. But, but the other passengers are like, what are you doing? Give up the box. It's insured. Yeah. Give and, up the box. And then it's And when not. they find out, they get upset because they're all put in jeopardy because of the contraband too with law enforcement. Yeah. And I mean, they're also in jeopardy because he won't give it up. And then like, yeah, all, the whole train is going to get turned back. I mean, it could even what be is something Monocle's, like- What is Monocle's uh, opinion of this lockbox slash um, real revelation? Like, how does this factor into Monocle's plan to, 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 to fake their own death and go off the record? Is that what Monocle's plan is? That was what I thought it was. That, I thought that they, they were going to disappear, right? Well, 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 but, but so the re disappear, like- I'll admit I'm slightly confused by it. So my my interpretation of what we talked about was that Monocle wants to use this journey, this sort of like tunnel in the 18th century to, and, and it wants the robbery to happen so that they can disappear and go off the record. But where are they going? Are they just like living in the 1840s? Time? Well, no, I, I like the idea that they have a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll admit that I am slightly confused. So what did you that. think? What did, what, did, what did you imagine Mr. Monocle? Being? Well, I mean, my thought was Mr. Monocle very much intends to go to Cyber Frisco as, you know, as they're, as they're going there. But once, but like there's something else on this train that is going to Cyber Frisco that's going to compromise them. And they have this plan to get rid of that thing. Um, so like, say there's a, you know, there's a court case against Mr. Monocle's company, Monocle Co. And somebody on this train has a suitcase full of evidence of that. And Mr. Monocle is hoping like, oh, well, somebody just robbed the train and got rid of those documents. Fancy that. Like that, that was sort of my thought. So it's sort of be like when you travel with a, a marshal, like when a prisoner, tra like when someone's traveling with a marshal on a plane, cause they're like going to like court somewhere else, like a, Somebody who's like in custody. Some was Monocle in custody. So maybe. So here, here's. Oh, let's see what the ideas. We have some ideas coming in. We should look at them because we're getting kind of in our own yes. heads a little bit. That's true. So, um, so rather than a lockbox, it like should be some sort of puzzle item. I think that's fine. I think lockbox is just the general term that we're using for that's this perfect. item. It could be anything, like where it's like a box that like yeah. has this thing in it. Um, but it should be definitely be something that the robbers think would be valuable. Yeah, like it like looks nice, but or like it looks interesting and, or valuable. Yeah, so smaller item. Yeah, I was imagining like literally like a lockbox, like the size of like those little like pencil boxes in elementary school. Like I was not imagining something big, like something that you could like hide on your person for the most part. Oh yeah, right. Uh, hmm. Thought so, thought about monocle. Um. Monocle might not might not even be like let's say following my idea of like there is some evidence against that person. It it could be evidence against somebody Monocle like works for or cares about who you know is like po promising a, a payday if he can make or if she can make the uh, you know the evidence disappear or something like that. So it's not necessarily Monocle because then everybody's kind of familiar with, oh, you're the person who this person is bringing evidence against. Can I make the case for why I think it should be more substantial than like just like some form of evidence? Go for it. Um, evidence can be like destroyed or confiscated or disappeared, but like actively like transporting yourself, like making the person the evidence is a lot harder to do and survive. Like I can imagine like something like what's to stop the tr train them just, from just sort of like having that one suitcase destroyed, you know what I mean? Oh, wait, what if Monocle wants to get on the train? I think that's what Merlin's saying. So Monocle was in the old West hiding and wants to get back on to like go get treatment somewhere else. So that's why the train needed to be stopped just because Monocle wanted to get back on. Would that work or would it be escaping only? Cause I think I liked the idea of like it either being that like, like it having to do with Monocle herself. 
I, I love the idea of it, Monocle being the contraband. Like that's like, because that's a real challenge. How do you really get like, get a human being to travel between dimensions under the radar outside of the system? Like that for me is more, I mean, I think evidence can be a part of it. Like a person can be evidence. I don't know. I just feel like because everything that came on the train is so scrutinized. Hmm. We need to make decisions soon so we can start doing the character stuff. Right. So let's lock this yeah, down. Yeah, I feel I, like like my only problems with it aren't necessarily right. problems with the idea. It's just that I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it because because right. I'm because just sort of fundamentally, my thought was this is a character who's just one of many passengers on a train who we assume is a friend, but it turns out is secretly behind the robbery. And I'm not entirely sure I understand what that means if this character is trying to either get on or off the train and isn't there at the start. Right. Um, I mean, okay. it could be that she's on the train at the start and then literally like wants the train to like slow down enough that she can jump off and disappear because this is like the only place. But isn't the real trick going to the new dimension? I but guess that, it depends, right? If, hmm. But if the train stops and she wants to get off, then what's to stop her from saying All right, exactly folks, and then walking yeah, up yeah. but if the train stops and she gets on then that makes me wonder if the robbers already know about this train and also here's a character oh, not so, so here's the case for alexi's uh idea of making monocle somebody who's been waiting for monocle is the leader of the train gang maybe i i'm not in love with this and they've the one who's marked the train because they're from actually from another dimension and they know how to like find trains yeah, from the future or something. Not future, but like another dimension. I'm not in love with that oh, idea, but like that here's, works. Here's here's an idea. Here's an idea that kind of bridges this. Great. So, let's say there's four train robbers. We assume from the beginning they are all from the 1840s. Turns out three of them are. The fourth one is trying to stow away, and the person who tipped them off is somebody else on the train whose name is Monocle, just for for purposes of connecting it. Who is like. My brother who got stranded, I'm trying to get home. Oh, that's better. So, yeah, I like that. I like that. That's so okay. I, I have been in communication and I, I, helped, I helped my brother embed himself with these robbers. But then it becomes a question of how do you, get, how do you then stow away this person on the train in a way that is interesting because now this person is like kind of sympathetic. I mean, if she, right. I mean, if she has a plan good. to basically kick someone off the train and replace it with her brother. Ooh, thought, 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 thought. They're outlaws. This person, uh, brother, has been hiding in 1840s Utah from the law, and now, like, the statute of limitations has passed, and is trying to return with his sister Monocle so that they can continue their criminal reign in Cyber Frisco. Mm -hmm. I like it. Let's. I think we really need to go to the protagonist now. But I, I love <laughs> all of this. Let's, okay, let's, so let's, here, let's talk about the let's protagonist. Let's Real quick, let's do the. Let's flow into it. All right, I'm gonna do the recap one more time because I feel like this was confusing. Sorry, I want to oh, just oh, make by sure. The way, by the way, just last second, I think that Monaco brother should not be the leader of the robbers. I think it should be the the person you do not suspect. Yeah, the leader of the robbers should be like that charismatic train robber person, but they're actually an 18th century chain yeah. train robber. Yeah, and they're like they're like very very polite about robbing everyone. Like in uh, what is it? Thelma, yeah, Thelma and Louise when she robs the place and she's like, wait, no, 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 that's the opposite. She was not. No, Owen, 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 Harrison Owen, Ford and Frisco Kid. No, yeah. Owen Wilson from Shanghai Noon. <laughs> 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 okay, so here's the here's the story. Everybody ready? Our protagonist is potentially a gay cowboy getting on a train in the future. This is an inter dimension piercing train. They're based in Cyber Utah, and they're traveling to big city Cyber Frisco. In order for the train to get there, this dimension piercing train has to take a bridge or a tunnel through the Old West. Our protagonist wants to bring a lockbox which, with them, which contains something personal, but it, it's contraband. It is not allowed to be on the train, and if they are caught with it, everybody on the train will be in trouble with law enforcement and perhaps get turned back. It could be something that simple, right? So, and this was like an expensive trip, so it really, really matters. All right, so they're traveling through the Old West when robbers attract the, attack the train, Old West robbers. They're like going around 
stealing everything. There's four of them there. And when they finally reach our protagonist and they want the lockbox because it looks nice, our protagonist resists. And it, it starts a conflict that ends up derailing the train. Um, and then now we have to get the engine started back up again within a set time limit or else they're going to get stuck in 1840s Utah forever. Right? I was thinking they have to start it up again before law enforcement from their universe shows up to get to rescue them and realize that they all need to be arrested for contraband reasons. Okay. So that's the issue. Yeah. Cause I feel like it's more Western, right? Like, like the yeah. idea of we have to start it up or else we are stranded is very sci-fi, but the idea of we have to get out of here before the sheriff arrives, you know, that, that to me is Western. I, th I thought we agreed on that. Our okay. Reason. I must have missed yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't get in there. Um, Central law enforcement arrives and realizes there's contraband. The motivation is basic is don't get arrested. Yeah, don't get arrested. It would completely ruin their chance at a new life. Yeah. And it would just, you know, ruin getting gambling. getting arrested is uh, logistically um unfortunate for a lot of other things in your life you know well that and i was imagining that this train is really really expensive this is sort of like when someone was going to buy a ticket to the new world and yeah. like sold their entire life for it or like a ticket to mars you know it's like, it's like, one it's of like those fifty thousand dollars per ticket of american u.s dollar like it's like something people can sa save up years for a ticket you know yeah and so it's like everyone was finally going to go get this new life. And if you're caught with contraband on the train, then everyone gets sent back and loses that money. And like the main person would be arrested. So that's bad. Um, I've thought, I've thought, I've thought, I've thought for midpoint. Because it occurs to me, Gay Cowboy and Miss Monocle um, don't really necessarily have to be enemies. Right, like they could totally team up because they're both just trying to get to the other side. Right, but if they are afraid of law enforcement showing up, what if at the midpoint, like after whatever conflicts between Gay Cowboy and you know the robbers, um, a rescue scout who's essentially like a bounty hunter type is is sort of sent by Central to investigate what's going on and sees like, oh, this is an illegal situation. I gotta take down you know, the ringleaders of this and hold down the fort until law enforcement shows up. And then that person could essentially be like the big bad that they have to deal with. How about it's, I, I love the idea of it being law enforcement that's set up. What if it's like somebody who's like, I don't want to make, get too science fiction here. I mean, this is very science fiction, but you know what I mean? Like if it was something like somebody's activated on the train, like built-in security on the train that arrives before law enforcement because we don't want it to be like well if they send it why don't the, the cops full on arrive you know what i mean right mm. like the, like uh, imagine like in, you know an alien ash mm. like there's something like that like there's a there's a marshal on the train well i mean it could just be something as simple as there's like ai on the train that's going to activate if there's a problem and so monocle kills it beforehand because otherwise they would be a problem so then like this thing that was supposed to happen is just like oh wait why dead. isn't it just a marshal on the train yeah that's what i was thinking like an ai marshal and monocle's already killed it because otherwise that wouldn't really work so and that could be part of how the robbers succeed but, well like they could kill an ai the immediate ai response but like that doesn't necessarily mean there isn't like a hidden law enforcement officer on the train i guess like to, to try to do the same thing as the bounty hunter. I have an idea on this because like, I was just I was trying to think about why, like if there's law enforcement on the train, then why isn't that our protagonist? Because then they're up against the robbers. And it occurs to me, you have somebody on this train who is a marshal who could not care less about these robbers. All he cares about are interdimensional contraband rules. And he's like, we dislike him off the bat because he's not doing anything about these robbers, but he's weirdly suspicious of our gay cowboy protagonist who is trying to not let him know about the situation that he's carrying something illegal. And halfway through, this guy could figure out, oh, 
there's contraband indeed on this train. Yeah. Real quick, why is gay cowboy in the first place? We just chose a trope. Here it was right arbitrary, here. yeah. We Entirely just, arbitrary. right here, we were looking at tropes, TV tropes. <laughs> we literally said gay cowboy, and so we were like, oh, that's what we started. I, I don't know if, like, they should be a cowboy. I mean, it could, I mean, if we're from, like, Appalachia, Ozarks, whatever, I could imagine them being, like, a rugged, like, survivalist person. Outdoors, outdoorsman, you know, I yeah. get that. But, like... Who, we need to start. We need to talk about the protagonist. They cook cyber meth. We keep going back into um into the recap. All right, let's do. Are it. we done with the recap? They make cyber heroin. Well, it's because we keep doing the recap and then figuring more things out. Yeah, but okay. we do need to figure out the protagonist. All right, let's um, do it. Protagonist. Who do we want it to be? I Is love it a man. Uh, sure. Okay. We've done female protagonists three times in a row. So there finally, one for the men. Yeah, let's do it. We, 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 we need a man. Um, uh, finally, a male protagonist. Um, <laughs> Jesus hmm. Christ. <laughs> Guys, you're being, you, you, that's not what I meant. You know it. Um, but uh, how about you? You want them to cook meth? Why? Explain that. Oh, I was just thinking in terms of Appalachia. I don't know. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. I, I've never been. So, um, so the determined homesteader, the determined widow. Hmm. Well, they are a widow in a sense. If the, like somebody's pretty much dead, if they leave that dimension, if we have it be their ex, it's, it's a recording of their ex, like leaving them for a new life. Somebody had a suggestion about hooker with the heart of like the the protagonist being native, and I I'm thinking if yeah. it is somebody who is used to, you know, you know, pros like persecution and always has to kind of walk a thin line. It's like, you know, I definitely can't be caught because they will immediately suspect me and they will look into me and they will find out that I'm carrying contraband. Right. So this person could be, say, native, um, coming from, um, you know, cyber Utah because maybe there's like a reservation there and is going to this town because he came across some fortune and is trying to start a new life. Um, but it still has to like deal with crap getting there. Yeah. What do you so think, then, Adam? So, so then, do we re do we not want the lockbox to be related to their fortune? Mm, no. we, we could. It could be a red herring. We could think it has to do with the fortune, but it's actually something bigger than that. Right. Okay. Okay. I like that it's personal, and we don't really yeah, know. I do. I do too. So it's like. So this person is living in cyber Utah, which is like future. I'm imagining like the stacks in, uh, what is it? Ready player one. Like it's like the new sad place to be. <laughs> oh, they, they, they spent their, the fortune to get the ticket. Yeah. Hmm. I would imagine so. And so then now, they're traveling and something inside this lockbox is like important to someone that they've lost or it's someone that they're going to meet there. It's like very important. What's up? Idea. Um, well, f first just kind of backtracking a little bit, the idea of spending all the money on a ticket and the place that they're going, I think is good because then there's something to lose. Cause if they don't get there, they've, they, they spent all their money, but I like Lane laws thing here. Um, a big yes. issue is uh, in the Cherokee Nation and others right now is preservation of their language. Could that be something protagonist is trying to save? What if the personal thing, the hologram of somebody protagonist cares about, um, like it's somebody who passed away speaking in their language and it's like something that they need to preserve because it's important personally and culturally. Okay. I, I like that a lot. Let's make it that happen. Okay. So what is, let's, let's talk about, okay, so we know what they want. They want to preserve this thing they, 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 that's related to their culture and past. They want to make a new life for themselves. Um, what is their flaw? Well, let's figure out who, can we figure out who they are? Or is yeah, there... oh, I, thought, I thought we had a, a, a male native uh, who wants some new life for themselves. Native? American. What's their name? Yeah. What's their name? Now, do we want a character who like has two names because they're code switching or is that too complicated? No, I think that works. Hmm. Good question. I wonder if there's anything in the tropes, um, you know, like 
that we could steal. Um, so I, think, I, think, I think they should still be gay because I like that. Um, and yeah. it occurs to me their flaw, because I because we're focusing so much on this is somebody who's willing to derail a train, then you know, as instead of losing this box, maybe their flaw is selfishness. Or are they Cherokee specifically? Or do we want to I didn't want to not be specific word being Yeah, let's let's, let's okay. go for it. Sure, why not? Okay. Um Cyber Cherokee. What if what if this is somebody this is the bad version, <laughs> but what if this is somebody who like is grappling with the response, like the the forced responsibility of having to preserve this family history? Like, because on one hand, it's sort of like so much has been sacrificed to get me here. But, you know, like, do I want to make my whole life about that? That's one direction. Hmm. Here's the thought. What if the exact opposite? What if they start off kind of resenting that they've been given this massive responsibility? Oh, that's and, what I just, yeah, that's what I meant. That's, oh, I'm wait, like, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, no, that they're I, resenting I, it. And I misunderstood. I misunderstood. I thought, I thought uh, huh. No, that they resent the, the massive responsibility. Um, and it's like other people have sacrificed to get them that ticket. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so it's like, screw you for forcing me to go through with this, but I'm honor bound by like the fact that you died for me to right. continue this thing until eventually it's like pride. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here's a quick note. It could either be a message from, I mean, I like the idea of it being a message from a loved one that's just like in that native language. That way it's not, cause like it is similar to Book of Eli where like he's carrying, isn't it that deep? It turns out that he's carrying a Bible the whole yeah. time. Um, and there's a twist on that, but yeah. yeah. Um, I do like the idea of it is a lost loved one and it's like, I'm angry at you for dying and for giving me this this whole responsibility because I loved you and now you're gone and all I have is this burden of you. And then it, that could turn into, you know, pride of caring something for somebody they cared about. And, and resentment for the sacrifice that they made because the sacrifice yeah. means that you're no longer in my life. Yeah. And for what, this idea, this language that we bar that I barely even speak, you know? Yeah. I he's, just... he's angry at his loved one for dying. Yeah. And the inner need is to embrace their loved one's mission. That's one way you could do it. I'm, I'm not saying that yeah. that's the best version. Yeah. I think that works. Trying to preserve this language doesn't want this. Oops. So, and then the inner need is to like. Embrace this responsibility. But, but here's the, is that this story? Like, is this conflict designed to really focus on that as like i mean it can be obviously you can go a lot of ways this but like is the are the, is the stew moving in that direction hmm. embracing the responsibility i mean i think that we also have the thing about monocle wanting to bring back her loved one so we're, we're kind of in the right zone how can how can monocle be Different. like a, ref, a reflection of the flaw like an unrealized version of like them like the flaw to the extreme that's a good way to people usually go. Idea, about. idea. Um, Monocle's brother, who got stranded, and, or or it was in this place who there who she is now trying to bring back via this robbery group, um, fled a responsibility to go here, like like avoided sacrificing himself to avoid a responsibility um, that like was on him, and that's why he fled, and now she's trying to help him get come back so that you know, to, to sort of complete that neglect of that responsibility of like, finally, you've actually completely gotten away with avoiding this responsibility. I like that a lot. I like that oh, a lot. So brother. Kind uh, of like a Jonah and the whale kind of situation almost. So who's this? What's the brother's name real quick? Spectacles. Spectacles. <laughs> Bifocals. Bifocals. <laughs> All right, everybody, what do you all think? What's the language, or what's not language? Wow, sorry, I was reading a comment. Um, what's the name of bro the brother? Hmm, what Patrick. Do you want? Patrick? I'm trying to see if we have comments coming in about the name of the brother. Sorry, I'm, I'm just being... Uh... So are, are they like in their 30s? Is that what you're imagining? Yeah, everybody should be in their 30s, early 30s. Everybody in the world, I think, should just be in their 30s. Everybody. We, we don't want any we don't want any old people. No this young is people. Logan's run now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, we haven't gotten any comments yet, but it's because we have a little bit of a time delay. Let's see. Huh. Um, Mentor the conductor, obviously. No. <laughs> oh my god. Monocle, right? Monocle is kind of the actual mentor and antagonist. Yeah, well, I think that the like, I wonder if there should be sort of a switch where, like, for the first half yeah, yeah. of the story, There's... we assume that the antagonists are like the robbers, but the second half of the story, it's this marshal who only cares about contraband. I mean, that works um, as um, long as we we keep it focused. Um, we have so, name suggestions. So Monocle isn't really Cyber Patrick. Name someone Winter. Yeah, I think at this point, the way Monocle's evolved, I don't think they are an Antag antagonist, antagonist anymore. I can imagine them coming into conflict when they first learned the truth about her, but right, right. I think their their goals are kind of aligned, which is get our contraband through. Right. Our, our, Winter's a cool name. Our protagonist or the brother could be Winter. The, brother, can... the brother's Winter. Okay. <laughs> and our protagonist is Cyber Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Actually, no, the protagonist should be Winter. Uh, because that's a that's a more interesting name. Yeah. Okay. Reminds me of uh what is it? American God's name. It's also a name that Shadow. can Yes. Yeah. Hey. You know, I haven't seen the show. Is it good? First season's it. great. Second season kind of lost me. Third season has a new showrunner, so I'm curious. Okay. I'm not gonna watch it then. So what is it? It's the it's worth watching. It's worth watching. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I read the book. I'm it's a big extremely fan. Style, stylized, and the performances are solid. So, so the brother's name is Patrick. Right, got it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So okay. Patrick is his old west name. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> people aren't named lame things like that. But it turns out his name is Pater Eck. or Pater X. Patrick. <laughs> Pater X. <laughs> um, uh. Yeah. Um, hmm. So, so we're making Mr. So we're making Mr. Monocle the, um, the mentor. mentor. So Patrick, one way is to make Patrick the antagonist. Oh. I think Patrick is kind of the antagonist for like the first half, pretty much. He's the false antagonist, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause for the first half, it's like our big problem is these robbers who are strip mining our train and who caused us to crash in the first place. And the second half is, we all kind of got to work together because we all want to get through to the other side, but there's a marshal on the train who wants to arrest everybody on this train now. We should have, yeah, the marshal. We should just call the the marshal the marshal because the marshal and the, the marshal should be and the marshal should be a dick from the start. Like you oh, should yeah. know this person is a problem, but they should really like halfway through at the midpoint. It's like I just learned what Winter is carrying, and that's illegal. And and up until that point, the marshal's trying to protect Winter, right? Or because even all, all the all the all the passengers because that's their job. Well, I, I kind of like the marshal being like, we don't protect people. We just protect like okay, we just that's... we just protect like property and like everybody on this train. Like I do not care about because it's all it's all insured. But <laughs> if you are going to break the law, then I have a problem with you. Like they're pros oh. they're, they're like a prosecutor type, you know? No, the false antagonist is the charismatic train band, like the robber leader. Yeah. Yeah, I think not so. Patrick, right? If Unless Patrick I, is like the smallest one, like I, the, I think, the tiniest robber. <laughs> so, if I can point out what I think the fun of this movie is, the move, the fun of the movie came from Alexi's idea, which is real people from the old west yeah. getting into this whole sci-fi shit. Like that, for me, is like that's that's the fun bit in the trailer. I love it. I love it. That's really fun. Like I want the train. <laughs> I want the train guy, the robbers, to be like awesome. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna team up with Winter, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, and Monocle in the second half in the climax. We already have that. We have conductor here, so it's leading. There. So okay, so the false antagonist is the super charismatic black hat robber leader from the old west, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whose name is? Oh, <sighs> Mr. Beard. I don't know. No. Logan. <laughs> Logan. Red. Oh, red. What if it's a different color, like purple? Ziegler. Huh? Ziegler. Pink. <laughs> oh, Mr. No, that, that, that I can't do Mr. Pink. It's Pink. Taken. Blue. 
yellow. What if it, let's do a color that's an unusual color? Chartreuse. How do you even spell that? Chartreuse is great. I love that. That's one step away from fuchsia. Oh, Sinclair. Oh, Sinclair is nice. Sinclair, like Sinclair. fuchsia. Fuchsia Sinclair. Fuchsia Sinclair. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he introduces himself. So I'm fuchsia Sinclair. Wait, so in Winona Earp, they said that, I don't know how true this is, but I'm going to buy it anyway. They said that in the old Western times, um, blue was a girl color and pink was a manly color. And it like flipped over time. I don't exactly. know if that's true, but then I mean, it, the the people used to men used to wear wigs as a form of like office and importance. So I believe anything. But just anyway, I was just saying, you should declare. Impact, Robert Leader. Oh. Fuchsia Sinclair. Charismatic pink hat, Robert Leader. Oh, this I is love true. It. Oh, indigo is a little bit more manlier. It, uh, indigo, more... indigo is too much of a it's a Native American name. Is it? Yeah, and we don't want like if fuchsia. We can't have both fuchsia and winter. I don't know. I feel like what creates more contrast? Oh, wait, wait, we cut, we're cutting uh, fuchsia. No, I love fuchsia. I, I, I oh. like fuchsia. I like yeah, fuchsia. Fuchsia's great. Um, I love that because like they, they like like this type of character look, probably like loves to like be perceived as being more upper class than they are, and like. Hmm. So they chose the name Fuchsia for themselves. I just very imagine high like this man with like a very intense like drawl and like very like chiseled being like Fuchsia Sinclair. Yeah, I love it. That's fantastic. They speak <laughs> with a very fistless kind of way of speaking, you know, just like unnecessarily comp like complex and like synonyms for things. Oh yeah. Every day. Um, How do you spell thesaurus? Talks like a thesaurus. That's that's it. Okay. That's it. You did it. Apparently, George Washington used to like use like really big words just to use really big words because he was insecure about like his writing. It's such an insecure <laughs> thing, right? Yeah. It's like you need to look big because otherwise they'll realize you're weak and they'll replace you as leader of the robber group. Yeah, yeah. You sure are. <laughs> I don't know why that. Huge. <laughs> He hates being called Fuchs. Yeah, people call him Fuchs and he shoots them. Like he's super charismatic until someone's like, hey, Fuchs. And then he goes, oh. like, oh. Can, So just to bring this back to the I protagonist, like um, <laughs> I, I, I love all of this. I think this is really fun. The fun of the movie is like showing itself. Yeah. Um, what is Winter's superpower? What's I feel like Winter should be really good at something that should so matter. Real quick, let's explain what the superpower is in the context of the tentpole. It's not actually necessary. It can be like a sci-fi super like extraordinary thing, but typically all it is is it's a core competency that's yeah. going to enable them to succeed where others wouldn't. And so it can be something like, you know, that they're smart or like that they can like deduce things. It can be that they're like a really good fighter. Like it can be anything, but it's some sort of core competency that sets them up to succeed here. So well, what's just the trope? Away. What's the trope? Because the trope, I think, in this kind of movie, the protagonist it's is a person who doesn't speak very much, but when they speak, you listen and and is a sharp you know, shooter. and and is a sharpshooter. Like that, that's sort of the trope of this character. And I wonder. Let's if make him chatty. Him. Let's make him chatty, and his superpower is um, tying knots. <laughs> so what he's just like sitting on the train tying different knots he's really good at making paper airplanes <laughs> <laughs> but what if he's like an engineer because like I'm, I'm just thinking ahead because what they're gonna have to do is fix this train. oh yeah I, I i love the idea of him being like like having a job that is in conflict with his roots oh interesting he's a he he's good with tech maybe yeah like maybe he's like a he's an engineer super chatty engineer and also that would be unusual for an engineer so i kind of like that yeah it's like it shoots somebody like just like that bang 100 meters away gets dead in the eyes like wow what is your job i build computers <laughs> <laughs> well what's our thematic question it's about like it's about the need. It's, it's about it's about embracing it's about respecting and it's about respecting your history. It's about 
expecting the sacrifices of oh, oh you know what it's about history. you know what it's about oh that's interesting um but I, i'm thinking in terms of are the people that we like want to flaunt the rules for stuff that matters to them and the person we don't like wants to follow the rules at the expense of people so you know i guess it's the thematic question is what is more important the law or I'm blanking on what the word for this is, but the thing that's more important to you as a person, um, like it, it, like, are do the rules matter more than honor? Maybe. Interesting. It doesn't quite tie to flaw and inner need. I, I, it's it's close though. It close. Close. It's very close. It's very close. It's, I'm I'm tripping on the the way I, I word it. I, is, I think it just has to be tied to his. It has to be tied to the sacrifices his family made to get him here. So do you not like, what do we owe to tradition or family? I, I just feel like there's right. so much, there's so much about contraband and breaking the rules for the people you care about. And, you know. What do we owe to our family sacrifices? Right? Because mm -hmm. in a way, Monocle sacrificed to get her brother there, right? Like. What was more important to us than the rules, maybe? Because for our the people we like, you know, for for Winter, it's you know honor to to somebody that he lost. To Monocle, it's family, and to Marshall, it's nothing. Hmm. I see that it's so like Marshall wanna... is like the rules are everything. The rules reign supreme. Like there's yeah, nothing yeah. more important. If without rules, we we descend into you know brutality. Oh, that's in what does honor look like? That's an interesting take. What do you think, that's Adam? Look at because I, I, I like if we can combine. I, I like this idea of like the rules we we've been taught by our family, the rules of our society. Like I, I like the like sort of expectations and like protocol. Like right. every character has a different relationship with that, but making it making it really personal. Mm. What's more important, your rules or societies? It's like, I think it has to be about family a little bit. It does, I just, or the, like, I would totally agree, Avi, if, if, if Winter didn't have like this Native American like legacy thing that they oh. had to like carry on. Like that's the only thing that isn't- It's like heritage right versus there. something, right? Oh. It's like heri only, yeah. heritage versus like the rules like, that will help you succeed like like there's some they're like her, her, respecting the past and heritage and your family's rules like doesn't necessarily get you ahead in this world right so like what it's a i mean i don't know it's like heritage versus because like it's like law versus it's not quite law versus heritage but it's like they're all sort of or like self versus like what do you owe to your heritage versus self but then that's not expressed in the rules, you know, like. Duty like how to is family Marshall versus Marshall? duty to government. Yourself, maybe. Duty to family duty versus duty to yourself. Well, it's like duty to something else versus duty to yourself. Because then, because then the marshal does apply to that. Because he's choosing to like, yeah. to, to fall in line with the government as the thing bigger than himself. It is true. They are all, they are all bound by duty to something larger than themselves. Um, you know, is society be is society tenable if you if you must have allegiance to rules bigger than yourself? Um, to you know, to a duty bigger than yourself. I don't know. It's 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 an interesting I, question. I, I, I like like we can't word. This is, this is the right, Avi. That's the right angle. I think. So do we owe something to a duty? Like, do we have a bigger duty because than the Marshall? Yeah, the Marshall has an idea of what that duty and the, their roles and stuff like the rules are everything. Um, and uh, Monocle <laughs> doesn't think we have any duty uh, to anybody other than ourselves. And Winter is struggling with that, right? The, there we the go. Duty has to do with their family. Well, there, is a, there is a piece that we're kind of missing also, which is the robbers who are not in on the fact that Patrick is from Cyber Utah. Like the idea of they're, they're just in it for themselves, right? They have yeah, no duty yeah, to anything yeah. but, but themselves. And I think that's it. Think maybe got it. maybe Winter kind of likes like is attracted to that. Mm -hmm. but they I need like to make really, a Yeah, maybe so yeah. Winter's attracted and he considers 
maybe dropping. Hmm. Yeah. At the because they could go back. They could go back more easily oh. if they drop the contraband. At the ultimate test, they do. Hmm. Because that's the that's when it's completely at stake, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have to do something to to get it back. They make the wrong choice. Yeah, they have to make the wrong choice. All right, so let's start filling right. this stuff out. Yeah, let's go. So okay, so Winter, he's in his thirties. He's a gay <laughs> Cherokee man, super chatty engineer. He's resentful of his loved ones for dying to preserve this language. And inside this box, he has a message from a loved one that's in a language that is very, very endangered. Ooh, I have a thought, Rand. I'm sorry to interrupt, but... What's up? Winter has spent all of his money on his ticket and on the place where he is going. Um, he has a new life set up for himself. If the marshal at one point is like, I will make you a deal... I won't confiscate your new home, your new future, so long as you help, you know, turn in all the contraband, including yours. He, if he's resentful enough at that point, he might actually do it. Or he could be like, I won't say it's yours. I'll just say that, like, in the wreck, we found this. And No, no, no. The, the point is that it's a choice where he makes the wrong choice. Yeah. I know, I know. So, like, yeah. he's saying, like, I'll confiscate it and I won't say it was yours. Yeah, me. Alexi, I like that, where it's like, Oh, Look, gotcha. I will yeah. turn in your lockbox and say, oh, I found a lockbox. Who knows who that could be? I like that, Alexi. And he might actually start working with the marshal on that of like trying to round everybody up. I don't know, something like that. Something that he then has to regret and red egg on. Okay, the lock. Hmm. The reason why I resisted doing sci-fi is the other time we did sci-fi, it got really dense because you have to do so much world building to just like get to like this point yeah. where you're actually doing a plot. Um. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely tied in like what a sacrifice mean to you. It's yeah. definitely tied into that. Um, yeah, Monocle has a family thing too. Monocle is trying to get her brother. Her brother was in, they were like cr a crime duo and her brother had to hide in the old west and her brother's Wait. working for Fuchsia. <laughs> yeah, and her brother's yeah. working for Fuchsia. So this whole thing was staged to get her brother, Patrick, back on the train. Um, also, I added this thing, that he spent his inheritance on the ticket. So the person died. Mm. He got an inheritance. Good. He That's spent good. it all on the ticket. I like that. Oh, here's uh, a thought. It just occurred to me there's got to be a moment where Fuchsia learns, like, Patrick, this is all just been to get you on the train. You're not in it for the gold. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so, like, Patrick, all this time, you knew about these future weirdos? Uh, so I have, idea. Idea. I have an idea. I have an idea. This is a very mechanical plot thing. But what if the train doesn't actually, like, like, I think the train should stop at certain points. But, like, the train doesn't, like, break down initially. Like, what if, like, it's just f off track? Like, oh, we're not, it's not, the, the dimensional technology is off but it's still a moving train in 18th century West. I just wonder if that's abrupt enough to be like a break. So the call, oh, real quick, the, the, the call to action is derailing the train, isn't it? Well, we hadn't really decided. Okay, so in case anyone- but what, I'm, what I'm saying is that the, the, they, the, the dimensional technology gets turned off. I think I think the inciting incident is when the train derails and call to action is we got to get this train going. Yeah, that's better. That's good. So the old West yeah. Robert. Well, but the response is that. Do we want them to like not be on a moving train is kind of for the most of the story is kind of what I'm saying. Like, do we want them to just be stopped? Oh, like, mm. because I feel like. The you idea want the big. train to get back on at some point in Act Two, so they can have moving train awesome action. Because what the fuck's the point of a train if it's not moving? You know. Well, I guess the the question would then be, where would they go in a train? Because uh, I could totally imagine if it does break down, but they're in the vicinity of some sort of like, you know, drinking hole town, then that allows for some opportunities there, as opposed to the right. middle of the desert. But like, if they're in a train, where are they gonna go? Like Nevada? Like I, I don't. But, well, but by the way, Alexi, what? what? I, I, th I think, I think old old robbers board the train. Winters refuse to give up lockbox. Train derails is all inside the incident. 
that in response his response to the train derailing. But does derail actually mean it's derailed? And because because, that, because then we don't get any like moving train off. I'm, this is my ho inner Hollywood hack is talking right, right now. Um, <laughs> but I guess Adam, I think the train starts running again in Act Three, and then we have some really fun running train action in Act Three. Okay. Okay. It's just are we, it's just a very conscious choice to like yeah. be off of a moving train for all of Act Two. I think we're gonna get some horse action until the train picks up again, and then we have train action. But also, there has so I'm imagining literally like the the technicality of like these robbers come up to Winter, and they're like, "Give me your box," and he's like, "No." And then something happens that Winter can't immediately like get shot by them because that's what they would do. So something dramatic has to happen to break up that thing, right? Gun, gunfight, he doesn't get hit, but a bullet hits something in the conductor's booth that destroys the technology that shuts down the train. Yeah, because it has to be something that interrupts the action or else they would just kill him and right. take his box. Yeah. I so, think they're like, they're like hiding behind chairs and stuff, and it's all very exciting. But like, n none of them get hurt. But it's something technological. Um, yeah. But I do think that the response isn't Winter refuses to give up lockbox. Yeah, this is the right. monocle. Uh, just to, so, yeah. Mr. Monocle is the woman on the train who's the sister of one of the robbers, and she does something to help because that she needs to stop the train. That's her whole thing, is that she needs to get her brother on the train. But I think her brother's on the train at this point. I think when, when the robbers get onto the train, and the tra um, like her hope is that this is all cover for Patrick is getting like stowed away underneath the floorboards or something. Um, she doesn't want the train to stop, but because um, when oh. they're on the train, then they're all, they all have a problem. So she really is like an ally because she wants to get the train going too. That's what I think. I think that they, I think that even if they would have conflict up front, just because, you know, like Winter would blame her for bringing on the robbers and she would blame him for refusing to go along with it and leading to the derailment. I think eventually they're allies. Yeah. Okay. So the Old West robbers board the train and hold everybody up. I think that that is the response, though, is that Winter refuses to give up the lockbox, and it shoots every, and then they shoot. Well, here's my argument why it's not. I think inciting incident is, you know, the, when the robbery happens and Winter fights back, the train derails. The response is everybody saying, oh, no, our train has derailed in the 1840s. What are we going to do? And call to action is, we got to get this train running again. That's, that's how, that's like how I it. Hate it. Adam, Adam, no, no, no. It, 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 no, it works for me. It works for Adam me. wants them on a moving train the whole time, but I just yeah, don't. I, I just, I just think train movies are awesome, and uh, I don't know. I, mean, I, I feel like there are other. There, there's another way to do it, but this also works. Like it's just, it's just a different choice. It's not, it's not a bad here, choice. Here, here's my pitch for why I think the train should stop. Right. I want them. I want them to get out into the desert. I want them to deal with rattlesnakes and horses and locals. And okay, then no, that's just a very get, different then, movie. Yeah, and then in Act 3, I want them to get back on the train and for the train to start running with action and whatnot. So what's the ticking bomb? What's the, the ticking cops. bomb? The cops coming. Cops the are coming. Central. They have, they have a marshal on the train, but like they know like everybody's going to show up and investigate everybody, and you know then they won't have a chance. I mean, I think Adam's option is basically that they're on the train, and the thing that shoots it basically puts it like off. I'm doing something with my arm where they're on the track like this. And then it goes like, Shh. it's like slightly off track. And now it's going the wrong way, and they have to get it back on track. Is that, that was that was what I imagined? But it's also yeah. it's just a different it's just a different movie choice. You know, it's right. like, the, what's the, the fun? Only... Are we doing like interaction with locals, doing the desert like western thing, or are we doing like uh, a train like thriller? You know, this is a good place for the audience, for our audience and our other writers to vote. So. People. These are two bats. I like both. They're both good. They're both good. Are we staying on the train or are we getting off the train and interacting with locals? This is just the choice we have to make. There's no right or wrong answer, but we need to decide. So what do you all think? And we'll wait for that to come in while I start getting this stuff put together. Refuses yeah. to give, give up the lockbox and there's fun fight ensues. Well, my very unbiased brother thinks that <laughs> to get off the train. Robbers have, oh, uh, let's see. Well, okay, that's your brother. 
<laughs> we need other votes too. Hey, you're getting lots of people. Well, I see one. I see oh. Daniel agrees. A very unbiased friend, go? Daniel Robbins. <laughs> Is that hey, your friend? One, one okay. before we don't leave the train. Thanks, Francis. <laughs> All right, shoots the control box. And then now we regardless, have to- Regardless of if the train stops or not, I do think that the response bit is, oh no, train isn't doing what train should be doing. And call to action, act one break is, let's get train doing what it's supposed to be doing. What? So the response is that regardless, the response is that central will show up, right? Or the or response is- We need to get the train going correctly again. But then uh, what's the call to action? I, I think that- I, th maybe I feel like the response might be just the disbelief of like, oh no, we're stranded in 1849 alternate reality, Utah. Um, we like, we're all very unhappy with the situation. We're all at each other's throats for causing it. And then somebody, maybe our protagonist, hopefully our protagonist is like, hey guys, instead of infighting, let's actually have a call to action here. So, okay, how many votes do we have? Get off the train, get off the train. Don't get off the train, get off the train, off the train. We're getting off the train. The train. Looks like we're staying in the train, or we're, we're getting off the train, party people. All right, so shoots the control box, train derails. I would say that if they don't get off the train, it is then, we could then make fun of it and call it 310 to Busan if we wanted to. <laughs> I've never seen 310 to Yuma. Um, Check it out. Is it good? Um, is it good? Um, yeah. Here we go. It's been a while, been a while so, since I saw it. So shoots the control box, the chain de details, derails. Um, and then, so the response is... Um, How do we get the robbers to stick around? Um, well, where are they going to go? Like, what, like what, is, what does Fuchsia want? Fuchsia wants the gold that is lining the inside of the train. Right, so then What's, they... Yeah. What stops the marshal from just shooting him? I thought that... Um, no, I thought that what's his name takes out the. Because I think the marshal doesn't care because it's all insured. The train's insured. Rescue is coming. Um, like he's just gonna wait for his battalion to show up. Like he has one job and one job only, and that's contraband. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So the response is that. Um... He's the... Javert. He doesn't care about like you know. But the response is supposed. He just cares about you know. In the tent pole, the response is supposed to be the protagonists. So this isn't like, cause I think that we're getting, I think that- Like what is that? How does the protagonist react to the train being derailed? Oh no, if I, if this train isn't going, then I will be found out and I will lose the thing that I care about and I will lose my home and I will lose my future and we'll all be arrested and it's gonna be a big problem. I honestly think like, Avi, I understand how you broke it down, but I think that it that's actually act, the beginning of act two, right? If you want, it's all semantics. Um, yeah. I, I do think I like my my final sort of like viewpoint on this and then you know do whatever you feel is right is I think the act break is the decision to try to get things back on track. No, I agree with that. No, it's the act one break should be the protagonist committing to their objective. Past and point of no return, right? Like that's traditionally Which I think happens after the everything is derailed and they realize that they're in trouble. Um But it's it's yeah. Like the this inciting is incident is like the thing that shatters the normal world. I'm just talking traditionally. And the protagonist initially doesn't want to react to that traditionally. Right. Isn't and the then they commit incident, to it. Isn't the inciting incident then the derailment? Yes. So I would say that the, the well, you, okay. it depends how you pl plan it out. Like, but we have, um, yeah. All right. Like so Ob that, Dan O'Bannon would like do, he's believer in like the slow burn. He'd want the point of no return to happen later. Mm. Like so it's it's really okay. it's a it's a different movie. Like it depends on anyway. what you want the conflict to be. Do you want them to be on a moving train or longer? Have Act One be more more of a slow burn, or do you want to accelerate the action to be like okay, got right. fifteen minutes of them being on the train, then it gets derailed. I guess I was just I was just thinking in terms of um, if the train is stopped and actually stopped in the middle of the desert. Um, right. Then I would assume that the Act One break is we are strapped in the middle of the desert. We got to do something about that. Um, but I don't know. You guys but think, I think I think it would happen. The moment, your heart's content. It would happen. I think in terms of just like outlining it and thinking about it, it would happen the moment, not necessarily like it derailed, but it's the moment that the protagonist 
decides that they're going to do something about it, which could be very close together. But it's Wait, sort of no, like, I think, okay, I think this is how it goes. Okay, look, inciting incident the old west robbers hold up the train or board the train, haul everybody up. Response Winter refuses to give up the lockbox, and a gunfight ensues. They shoot the control box, and the train derails. And then the break is that Central is coming, and his objective is to get the train started before Central shows up and realizes that there's contraband on the train. Sure, that, that way so. it's all Winter being active because the response is like where we need him to be active. So, does that work? Good enough. Yeah. Okay. Right. I got, I, I got the funny problem. thing is, at the end of the day, on the page, it would all look very similar. You know? No, but it's just thinking about, <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure that we're having yeah. winter be active. That's right. the thing. Is right. that, that's why I'm being picky about this, because right. I want to make I sure. I completely agree. All right, let's see. Um, yeah, because I, I definitely think, like, of the people on the train, right, Marshall is just like, let's just wait it out. Like, my, my guys are coming. Um, robbers are like, let's, you know, strip the gold. Uh, Patrick and Monocle are like, let's lay low, but Winter is like, we need to get going because I'm not waiting around for that because I have a lot on the line. So yeah. protagonist would be the one sort of wrangling people together to try to get the train going. Also protagonist has the tech understanding. So the the obstacles are the marshal wants to wait for, um, for Central. What happens to the lockbox when af in act two, like, do the robber like when when they fight when the robbers shoot the accidentally derailed the train like what happens to the lockbox so real quick i imagine that when the train derails it can like literally like turn like through the desert like flip off so that they can like see the undercarriage and see that there's gold so that's why the robbers stick around oh i like that and so then in that whole thing he needs to get the train back going but he still has the lockbox. Um, do the robbers take the lockbox immediately? So he has to get back the lockbox. I think. Or does he still have it? I think that towards the midpoint, he and Monocle should have, have a face off where Monocle is like, I need to know what's in that box. And they're fighting over it. And when Monocle realizes, oh, actually we're kind of the same you and I, you just want to get something you care about through to the other side. They become allies, but Marshall sees like, Oh, hey, that's illegal. I think that's sort of a midpoint thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's think until then, until then, Winter just has the lockbox on him and is like, "You come near me, I'm shooting you. <laughs> like, I mean, like you're not getting, you're not getting my lockbox." Want the gold and. Start. And like, meanwhile, like the, you know, the robbers, like Fuchsia, um, like they're like, screw the lockbox. This train is way more valuable than anything inside a tiny box could be. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the goal, they, they initially thought it was important, but now that the whole train like flips and like slid through the desert and everyone like goes outside, the robbers, Fuchsia sees that there's like a whole undercarriage of gold and is starting to like basically harvest it, right? Like he's collecting all the gold. There could be a bit, just as a fun little tiny obstacle, like Daniel Roberts suggests in the comments, where when the trail train is derailed, the lockbox could still be like inside when everybody's out and he has to like sneak in and kind of like get it out without anybody noticing. Like that could be a fun little sequence. Yeah. Just a reminder, why why does Winter not just wait for Central? Because they're because, gonna find out about the contraband. Right. Okay, because they'll do a sweep, okay. Yeah. yeah. And if their objective is get the engine started, it's actually technically not just that, it's get the engine started and get the train fixed. Yeah, get back, get, get to, so they you know, need a town of though. people to to put the train back on the tracks and to yeah, fix it, right. independent of law enforcement. Yeah, yeah. And, the ro and the robbers could be like, there's a town there, we could go there and get the train going, but they don't like us because we continually rob but doesn't them. The, but doesn't the robbers just, don't they just want to like, like scrap, scrap the train? Sure, but the robbers might, like, like for example, Patrick, right? Who isn't who isn't just trying to get the gold, but is embedded with the robbers? Could be like, I want to get the train going, even though my my friends don't, and I can't really stop them from trying to strip mine the train. But in the meantime, you want someone to help flip this train over. I know some guys. We robbed them last week. They hate me, um, but you know, if you can get them over here and hope that they don't notice us among your people, like that could lead to some fun things. So 
They so basically part of the obstacles is that they have to get the train upright. Yeah. They have to get the train running. Without um and, and also not let them scrap the train. Yeah. The robbers are trying to scrap the train. Things that matter. So they have to like, yeah. So how are they going to, uh, so they have to have people defending the train from the robbers while they're going to get help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by the way, midpoint, I wouldn't say it's, uh, well, yeah, I mean, Mr. Monica would learn it, but I think the more important thing for the mid midpoint is Marshall learns it. Oh, okay. I have no idea where this is going, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, it's kind of fun. Well, we got this. We got this. That's pretty good. Right. The marshal offers to let Winter off the hook. Um, so Winter initially agrees. Right. So now the train should be back up, right? I wonder. I wonder if maybe the journey to town to like get people to help should be after the midpoint because that separates our group a bit and there could be sort of plotting going on while you know while our a team is away that could be what so we could have um so we could have two sort of lines of action happening one at the train and then at the town trying to get help so we could intercut between those being like meanwhile back on the ranch you know yeah okay <laughs> <Back on the ranch. laughs> so has to go to the town to get help flipping the train. So what's 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 happening at the town? What's the town's problem? They keep getting robbed by these robbers, and they are not <laughs> fans of these robbers. Are we going to have who associates with them? Are we going to have these robbers be the big bad, or is there an even worse big bad, or is that too complicated? I think they have a very iron fist type marshal in their town. We call him like the sheriff or something, who is just. Zero tolerance for anything. So this movie, so this movie's just basically basically fuck law enforcement. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 great, 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 great. Just let's like put that out there. Let's We're do it. Why not? You know. You know uh, okay. So the marshal learn. So is it the midpoint then going to the? I don't know if that's the. I think the midpoint's going to the town, isn't it? Well, no, no, the, the midpoint can be like a series of things. Like okay, like so the marshal can learn the lockbox is contraband when they arrive at the town. Meet the sheriff. It could be the same thing. Who hates the... Do we want to do, like, the classic, like, they're in the saloon going for help sort of thing? And yeah, the they town... have to. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. So like let... if, if, we, if we are going to do Adam's least favorite thing and get off the train, we need to go play. <laughs> That's not know? my least favorite thing. We need to go play. Wait, wait. The great so. thing about getting off the train is that then you have all the Wild West tropes. Yeah. So it's a yeah. richer, richer canvas to play with. Yeah, if we just sort of milled around in, in the desert and didn't do anything except also, for around the desert, then that's a problem. One of the plots I love about um, <laughs> about uh, Westerns is it's about bringing the town together, right? So they have to like bring this town together to fix a gold-plated train. Well, here's Here's my big thing. How are they going to convince people without teaching them that we're from the future alternate reality thing, without doing that, how do they convince people to fix a train made of gold? Hmm, they say that it's what Jesus would want. <laughs> without bringing <laughs> Jesus into it. Without bringing Jesus into it. It, uh, him. it should be the main guy. It's like his superpower. Right. Hmm. The town has oh. a drought, and they have a water tank. Oh, wait, no, the town already hates the robbers, so the town will band together. They'll be like, we're going to take out the robbers. They, like, have our train. We need your help, townspeople, to kill the robbers, or, like, to take back our train, right? Alternatively, Cause... alternatively, because at this point, we might know that, like, Monocle and Patrick, like, are people that we like and care about the robbers. Like, the, the town people could be like, we'll help you if you let us kill the robbers, Patrick included, because he's the worst of the lot. And that could create more Oh, conflict. I like that. So the, the townspeople Patrick will help. Patrick should be a real piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, the townspeople will help if they get to like, basically, yeah, if they get to execute the whole robber band. <sighs> Why wouldn't Winter be down with that? 
Because he just uh, needs to survive. Why wouldn't he be down with that? Yeah, why would why why would he say no? Um, because he Monocle is on his side at this point. Okay, because 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 of Monocle's affiliation with him. Because yeah. Monocle wants to do it is why. Because Monocle at that point in the story might be his only friend in the world. So if, if, if the Marshall manages to turn everybody else against against uh, so Winter. Monocle, Marshall, and everyone learn that the lockbox is contraband. Right. Yeah. Everybody hates him but Monocle. Yeah, that's great. So we have a new new world where everybody's lost respect for him and is mad at him. Yeah. Because before then, he was kind of like the person who is like getting everybody together and like kind of their de facto leader. Right. Yeah. And, but now everybody hates him because if if Central shows up and, you know, find out about his contraband, then they're all going down, every last one of them. Yeah, so the Winter is the de facto leader. He could even, like, yeah, he's, like, trying to, like, manipulate people into helping him get the train back on the track, because maybe, like, Central Coming wouldn't be ideal for any of them, right. but it's not as bad as them getting caught with contraband. Yeah. Okay, so... Because without the contraband, it's just, like, you know, they got to spend, like, a day giving their statements about what happened. Right, but, like, right. Yeah. So they have to get help stopping the train with so they go to the town saloon. <laughs> right? And they're going to try to get help and they say fine but we're going to kill all the we're going to hang him. <laughs> to hang all the robbers the robbers including Patrick. So um, especially Patrick. <laughs> especially Patrick. So how do they convince the townspeople to help them without giving into this? I mean, maybe at first Winter's just like, sure, thinking that they'll figure it out. And also Fuchsia would be like kind of pissed. Well, Fuchsia's back at the train. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> I forget Fuchsia it was where, but yeah. <laughs> Fuchsia's back at the train. He was sort of like, well, so long, people. Like, <laughs> well, is there anything else that the town needs and doesn't have that maybe the train would have, but it would be a real sacrifice to give it up? Like, gold. well, I mean, the train is really, I mean, but gold for a specific reason. Maybe like part of the train could like fund like something about the town that they desperately need. It's like a destiny, yeah. Or here's here's a pie in the sky thought. Um, the engine. Uh, creates the fuel that actually keeps the train running, and a big component of that is water vapor. And this town it has a drought, and this machine would give them water. But if they give them that, then the engine is severely like. Then they only have a certain amount of fuel to get home. Right. I don't know. Eh, eh, so eh. Yeah, here's another here's another thing I'm just throwing out there. Um, do we want Winter to interface with other Native Americans? in the story because so much of yes. his story has to do with grappling with the legacy of running away from his people's story yes. and going to this time where people were like, were, were literally the West was like destroying everything about their civilization and their, and his, it's about him sort of grappling with self-interest versus preserving that. How do we bring that into this? Idea. If, we the sheriff is also a racist piece of garbage. Oh, of course. Right. Of course. Well, all the townspeople are. <laughs> if it's established that everybody in this, you know, this town, you know, from the robbers to that town to the sheriff are just like, well, we don't want to bring the engines down on us, like that kind of thing. If there's a point where Winter is sort of banished by the train, like if he's sort of out in the wilderness, if he finds like Native Americans and convinces them to help, then they don't need the town. They would come into conflict oh. with the town to upright the train. They would come into conflict on conflict with them because nobody, you know, nobody was gonna like them, but and nobody's gonna like winter. But here's, they could help. Just, just building off of that, here's my bad version. This is the super cheesy cliche thing. So in other all words, it's gonna be great. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Let me just put it out there. So at the all is lost moment, 
he gets rejected by everybody, right? Like, like he loses everything. Yeah. Why? And well, th- I'm I'm just saying plot. I'm, this is just a an aspiration to get to this point. Okay. We've he's lost everything and he's like left to die in the desert. And oh, so wait, they- wait, 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 pause for a second. Yeah. This is after the marshal says like. I'll I'll ignore your oh, after the deal after yeah. the deal and goes then, wrong and no after the deal goes right the marshal turns in him and is like this guy has contraband and like throws him to the wolves. yeah yeah exactly like there's no honor there you know it's yeah. all about the rules it's the guy lied to him to get the rule and so but he the basically the w- w- earlier he would have had like sort of some interface with like one of the tribes and had like kind of a negative reaction with them but like they could save him and he could get them to save the train yes. I think that's great. In the all or nothing. Yeah. And I knew this was going to be great the second you said that idea. <laughs> so the ultimate test is that the marshal is going to offer to let. So by the way, the ultimate test for anyone who's not familiar is a place where the protagonist is finally going to get a chance to like achieve their objective or right. not. And their flaw is going to make its final ugliest appearance and ultimately screw them. I love the idea of him making the deal and the marshal turning on him immediately after. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. So the marshal turns immediately. Back immediately. Because then, then, you know, Winter, like, being self, you know, just, just entirely self-centered about, you know, focus on his own personal, uh, his own personal honor at the expense of everybody else's, you know, it destroys him essentially. So moment. basically Winter's put the box somewhere for safekeeping. The yeah. marshal is like, give it to me and I'll like let you off the hook. And Winter's like, okay, fine. And goes and gives him the box. And then the marshal's like, get off the train. We're leaving you, you piece of right. trash. Like, right? Yeah. And- also side note, we would have to, uh, Lane's bring up a really good point of, we might not have to make him make Winter not a Cherokee to make him like a tribe that would be around at this time. Mm. Just the, the super mm. logistical thing, but like that's that's. Uh, I mean, this, maybe is, this is one I do a history. I would just hey, do a history hey. pass on this. Yeah. So they're in Oklahoma. Yeah. There we go. We're in Oklahoma. New Great. Oklahoma. They were coming from. <laughs> they were coming from New Utah. They were going to Cyber Frisco, but they got stranded in plain old Oklahoma. Okay. And he gets rescued by one of the people in the new new reservation. Yes. So he's rejected. By, so basically, at some point, oh, it's his great, great, great grandfather's. Like, uh, <laughs> are we doing time travel? Is that what we're doing? It's not time it's travel, just, but it's it like is, it like could dimensions be like that like plays with time. You can so. meet yourself in an altered dimension. That's true. So it's his ancestor from another dimension. Yeah, you know, I don't know. It's so that's a little too much. I like, <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. Um, different people, same language. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 1840s is too old. I, I was thinking that, but I wasn't questioning it, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. The answer is... Either way, it's Old it. West. Our time period is Old West, and our place is the Old West. I and- love thinking <laughs> like a screenwriter, you know? It's- <laughs> we would never just push this through. We would have to check all of this, and then decide what this we This is like about. the initial, like, we're trying to birth this the from roughest, that. The roughest of outlines. By the way, you know, I'm reading a book about the, the making of aliens, and they have the original outline by uh, Walter Hill and David Geiler before James Cameron came on board. And it's rough and wild and out there, but it was necessary to get where they had to go. Mm. So it goes back to, um, goes back to the native, to the Cherokee people that he met before. Well, no, he, that, that, that will happen at the end of the All is Lost. Right, the and All or like, Nothing, right? The All or Nothing is he convinces them to help. And then we move forward. The all or nothing, I think, is like a sequence of events. It's like yeah. it's like where the moment. It's like all the stuff that happens between all is lost and the final fight, where the momentum has come back. So a lot of things can happen there. It goes back to them. Um, asks for help. Maybe and he's also, even honest. Pers- about, maybe he's even honest about who he is at this point. Also, the start of the all is lost should be left for dead. Yeah. Uh huh. That's what I meant by rejected. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Rejected and left for dead. There's a. <laughs> so there's a lot of go out of the the harsh desert with that with barely any water and you know enjoy. There's nobody around for miles like that kind of thing. Yeah. So ask for help. Reveal who he is. 
Oklahoma isn't between Utah and California. Interesting. But you know what? Oklahoma is between Cyber Utah and and Cyber California. <laughs> Honestly, right. I didn't know where Frisco was. I was just thinking of a Frisco melt from uh, Snake oh, and Jake. Yeah. So I was just rolling. We'll, we'll iron out all of the details if we, if we were. To. It was a it was a curvy path. That's how dimensions work. Yeah. You got to do a big loop. All right. So Left for Dead. Uh, by everybody thrown off the train, the train is leaving. Like, like, one, like one of the stops on the track is like China. Like it's just <laughs> yeah, like it's like it's all over the place. Um, so hmm. asks for help and reveals who he is. Maybe he even like asks for help in his like native language. Like but, right. Like, but his... but but here's the here's the thing about it. He asks for help in it. In it doesn't matter that he has the track. These people are like this is a person. The person who helps him, like helps him through altruistically and like it's it's like that's what like his culture oh. is. like it doesn't matter who that they have a personal connection of like blood or whatever it's just kindness what yeah. matters to them isn't oh you're trying to deliver like a historical document or whatever it's like you're you're you somebody you love died and asked you to do this yes it's the emotional core and like that's where the on uh, that's that's the trigger for the inner need like yeah. growth of like really respecting where his family is coming from, yeah. where the sacrifice, self sacrifice of where his family is coming right. from. He has no personal connection to the language or the culture, but he has a connection to the person who asked him to care for it. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Ask for help, and then so what's the catastrophic failure? So now the native, so now the people that he just asked are going to help him get back on the train, right? Yeah. Well, I, I feel like a lot. Uh, some other things should happen in between that. The all is lost, all, all or nothing, or the and the final fight. Well, like, he's going to have to be with these, um, you know, Cherokee friends fighting against the town people, fighting against the marshal, fighting against the robbers. Like it's going to be a big old. It's going to be a huge uh, fight. Oh, so the train's up and running again. We yeah, want it's raining. Awesome. Yeah, awesome they fixed the train oh. without Emma. But they fixed the train without him. He has to get on the train. And his new friends are going to help him. And he has By to the way, Patrick. He has to they have, <laughs> it's going to be a beautiful scene where they use horses to get the train upright. Like they've like tied ropes around oh, the yeah. train and they're like pulling it upright with horses. It's going to look way. like a scene from Witness. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, 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 but he just set up people to die. He has to save them. Yeah, so, he has to save them. So basically, they leave Winter, they leave Patrick, they leave Monocle. And the train is going to get, get yeah. going. Yeah. It's going to go without them. Yeah. So Monocle, before we had an idea from, um, I think it was Katrina. Sorry if I'm saying, can you let me know if I'm saying your name wrong? But I think Katrina mentioned earlier that the idea was, that an idea was that um, Monocle will trade places with Patrick. And then maybe the sheriff is like, screw you both. I'm gonna mm -hmm. hang you both. You know, like all the marshal and the sheriff are both just like going back on their word. So now Monocle and Patrick and Marshall, all the robbers. Okay. The sheriff and Marshall are alternate universe, the same person. Yes. Hey. <laughs> but there's a movie that did that. There's a movie that did that with like time travel where like the, the shitty guy in the future like has like the same haircut as the shitty guy from the past and the same job and they're both bad. What film was that? But there was this. Oh, it's so, Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah, it's Back to the Future. But there was this one. What was that? Oh, yeah, one literally, show? it's Back to the Future three. <laughs> what was that one show where she like touches a rock and then now she's back in like olden times, and she like romancing the stone. Outlander. No, Outlander. Remember oh. how it's like her husband is like plays the bad guy because it's yeah. like a direct yeah. descendant. It's like that sort of a thing. Like. <laughs> God, I, Outlander is such trash. <laughs> it's such trash. My mom loves it. <laughs> I'm sure my mom does too. I like. I hit a point where I had to give it up because I was just like, I can't. I tried it. I thought that it was going to be for me because it like the time. pieces are there. Yeah, the, the pieces, pieces but it wasn't. It wasn't it for me. Yeah. What's to say? Oh, maybe Winter's delirious and asks for help. A lovely moment, I think. Yeah. 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 He, he, they're able to understand each other, but like the connection again isn't why they're saved. It's like he's able to speak to them because of this. But so how how is this new appreciation for his past going to enable him to succeed? 
Um, he is beyond he superficially to... having new allies. Because he's going to go help the people that he wouldn't. Because like, right, his... right, you're right, you're right, you're right. He's going to help gonna... Patrick and everybody. And he's yeah, going to his... get his back. Yeah, because like his ancestors, like the, the, the these people just helped him altruistically. So he's going to go save Monocle. And here's an idea. Here's an idea. Hmm? He sacrifices the lockbox. Because at the end of the day, it's not the lockbox and the memories inside of it. It's his his respect for his culture. Oh, and he knows the language. So, like... I really kind of want all of these Cherokees on horseback to, like, join him in Cyber Frisco, like, on the train. Like, I kind of want him to bring them all with him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a choice. It's like, I am literally Wait, bringing my how are they gonna get around? How are they going to get around law enforcement just detaining these people? Um, he takes him to his private property and is like, "You don't have jurisdiction here. I paid a lot of money for this." No, but like a custom, <laughs> like train space, a train Frisco customs. You know, he's an engineer, so he programs the destination well, differently. It know. takes them to his. No, his I, I get, I get the impulse. I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just, yeah. Uh, yeah so, I like that. Like, he uses his tech ability to crash the train <laughs> on his ranch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs to go to Frisco? All right, so here we go. It's in Frisco, it's just bypassing the station. <laughs> From Eric, you leader, right? right? I feel like if I was writing the script, this is the point in the outline where I'm like, I'll figure it out when I get there. You know? <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> well, he... this is the part that always changes the most anyway from an outline. Yeah. Like the ending always, yeah, you always got to change the ending. Goes back to save Monocle and Patrick. It's, it'd be interesting if Monocle realized that Patrick was a dick, and so they leave Patrick. Interesting. But then, like, how is Monocle embracing so Mon the same inner need of, like, altruism? Patrick's like, leave because me behind. I love being with Fuchsia. <laughs> hey, there we go. There we go. I love Fuchsia. Fuchsia cannot die. Fuchsia cannot die. We need to give Fuchsia a bigger part in this movie. I think Fuchsia and Patrick are in love. I think that... Hey. That works, and then what if like Fuchsia is like not gonna murder people on this train? He's like a gentlemanly train robber. Yeah, he's not. He's not violent. He's just yeah. a thief, right? Non-violent. <laughs> Fuchsia becomes the the new sheriff of the day. So she goes back to save Monocle and Fuchsia. The unexpected. So in the resolution, she leaves. Monocle leaves. Patrick with Fuchsia, because they're in love. It occurs to me that Monocle's real name is probably Monica. Oh. oh Monocle's is great, though. Yeah. Yeah, like Monica, the Monocle. My birth name was Monica, but I go by Monocle's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we've been doing this for effing ever. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, this is the problem with sci-fi. Yeah. The joy what... of sci-fi as well. The joy. Okay, yeah. guys, we're starting it over. No sci-fi, just Western. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, what's this? Race it all. <laughs> so, so it has to be a confrontation between Winter and the Marshal. So sh they save Monocle and Patrick. Patrick and the robbers. How, how does how does how does Marshall? So and they're all on the train again. Whatever they, they've they've gotten they, they've saved the people. How does Marshall derail everything? at the last second because that's the final fight i know i'm skipping ahead a little bit like there's a lot going no, on no, no, that's what we're doing that's where I, we're at. I think i think and i don't know how to do this yet but i really kind of think that marshall has to do something against his own code like is there anything that he could do that is oh. happy like what could he do that violates his rule about contraband oh um he could kill someone in their time like he's not supposed to do any. He's just supposed. He should to make a rule. He should break a rule to play dirty. Yeah, he needs he to break should. a rule, and then I think he needs to be. Well, is leaving Winter in the in a different dimension breaking the rules? Because I feel like that is. Oh well, here, here's the rule he could break. Here's the rule he could break. He destroys the lockbox message, and the thing about the contraband is it has to be maintained for like as evidence. You can't tamper with evidence. That could be a line. You know, like I'm going to take all, like everything has to be protected for uh, law enforcement and the prosecutor when they get there. His whole thing is he could just mean spirited, like blow up the box 
as like a final fuck you. Wait, what if the marshal, wait, well, here's, here's this, ready? The marshal's holding the lockbox and he's gonna do something bad and Winter has to shoot him through the lockbox, destroying the lockbox and killing the marshal. <laughs> And then he the decisive action. You're yeah. totally right. The decisive action should be like, dis get, like being fine, accepting that, like getting rid of the lockbox on your own. I have, so, I have an idea. Yes, ending this. Great. I think totally destroy the lockbox to destroy the marshal. Marshal, I think, should survive but get stranded. I think in the whole conflict, at some point, the marshal should like do something that pisses off the locals. And I think when they catch him, I think they should arrest him and point to his laser gun and say that it's for contraband. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Winter destroys the lockbox to stop Marshall. Accepting that he can that he can carry on. And on uh, Marshall gets kicked off the train to stay in uh, the 1850s or whatever it is. Doing time for breaking their rules. And they, <laughs> <laughs> and they, could, point, they could point to a, a contrabandy thing that oh, he does. Oh, and the reason oh. is the marshal should have killed locals because that's not against the rules. Like, who 100%, gives a shit? 100%. Yeah. Go full Harry Lyme in the last 30 seconds of, of like, the third <laughs> Great, line, you know? great, great. <laughs> so the marshal kills locals. And he's, like, buddy-buddy with the sheriff for a little bit, maybe. Or not? Yeah, I don't until, know. Until that point. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's the wait, you broke with the law. Wait, that's illegal. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. This is actually a pretty interesting idea. That happens every time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that we end up somewhere that doesn't it suck. Kinda does, actually, there's only one of the, we've only done one of these that I was like, I don't know if I'd want to watch that movie. Most Which of them one? are like, I think it was, um, the one about the evil Mark Zuckerberg character. Oh, the heist? Yeah, the heist. I, I, I was like, I don't know if I'd watch that. But like the, every other one, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So oh, you, know, you, know, you, oh, you know what'd be funny? Hmm? Marshall is stranded in the 1840s. And then he's just surrounded by, there's the sheriff. There are the, like whatever Cherokees didn't get on the train. There's, um, you know, the there's Fuchsia. And they're all like, well, he broke our rules. No, no, he's ours. He broke our rules. No, he's ours. He broke our rules. And just have him like fighting over who gets to have jurisdiction over Marshall's like punishment. I like that. That's great. And uh, of course, in the resolution, we need um, to have, uh... oh, so because he was a rightful passenger and he arrives at the destination without the contraband, he goes through security just fine. There's no problem. So this happens here-ish, that, he, that she decides she's going to give up. Right. So that actually works there, because then she's yeah, yeah. setting an example of like letting go as the mentor. So then the resolution is that Winter there. Yeah. With his buddy Monocle <laughs> should we should, so should we, they do that should they do the thing that they do in inception where everybody's getting off the train they all like like give not knowing nods to each other it's like the nods. ending of it it's the ending of inception with nods with the same amount of nods but a little bit more partner yeah partner no tip the hat partner yeah, yeah. tip the hat <laughs> so the, what does the marshal do real quick right here marshal does something Marshall Marshall uh, just tries to destroy the um, the evidence to uh, fuck up Winter. So he's gonna destroy the evidence, and then Winter just sh like shoots. Well, does that make sense though? It should be something that like is. Like, I think I think at this point in the story, he's just gonna destroy the train. Yeah, because you know, look, his he's got the evidence in his hand. He's got the evidence in his hand. Because he would never break that rule. So he's gonna stop. So he's right? gonna do something. But he's gonna destroy then, the train. And then Winter shoves him out of the train with the lockbox. Right. Yeah, that works. Sure. Sense. Because that that functionally is the same as destroying the lockbox. It's he's giving up. He's losing um, it. He's losing it. Yeah. 
Winter Marshall is going to destroy the train. Says that Winter can't stop him. Can't because he has a lockbox. Winter shoves the Marshall and lockbox out of the yep, train. That's right. He has a question. Let's say the lockbox survives this, right? Winter loses it, but it survives. That opens a fun little possibility of who gets it in the end. That's yeah. a sequel. <laughs> but I kind of want the Cherokees to get it. Okay. Yeah. They pick it up. Because it's a it's a it's it's a, a record of somebody's story. Yeah. From in their language. An in their language. Right? Yeah, in their language. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Also, you could say that the technology of it would uh would uh, be if they are able to mine it or use it, they could have advanced technology in this dimension that they could use to uh, overthrow the United States. Yeah, it's actually really funny. If it turns out <laughs> the message in the language is like, uh, "Winter, my love, I am so sorry that I had to die. Here are the specs for how to build a nuclear bomb." <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> This is our uh, real uh, legacy, right? So we need to name it. Um, oh, man. We had a proposal here, winter getaway. <laughs> How about something like... Um... Lockbox and two smoking barrels. <laughs> um, new tall. Hmm... What a funny thing happened on the way to Cyber Frisco. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Does anybody have any names? I know that we have people who have, who've stuck around. I appreciate you. It's been two and a half hours, which is wow. longer than it normally takes, but this is what it takes for a sci-fi. We <sighs> need to avoid sci-fi sometimes. I know that's, that's, that's what I was. I actually almost said before this, like, let's not do a sci another sci-fi, uh, but actually this one I think is a better end result than the other one. Yeah. I think we're getting better at this. Everybody. I think, I think this is actually a pretty cool, because like there are so many sci-fi Westerns and not that many of them work. Right. And like the few that do are kind of playing in somebody else's sandbox. Like the Mandalorian is a sci-fi Western, but it's like, it's Star Wars. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's, um, it's a, yeah. Yeah. And there's like Firefly, which works. And that's like about it. And I can't really think of very much else that is a sci-fi Western that just, like Winona Earp is not sci-fi, it's fantasy, right? It's so like, fantasy, right, yeah. Right, right. But this is a fun idea. Like there's something that you can do. I would watch this shiz. I actually really like this. Good job. Mm -hmm. So should the Adam do you want Adam or Avi, do you want to tell us the story from beginning to end real quick? Oh, I really don't want to do that. But um <laughs> Oh man. I don't I don't know if I have the wherewithal. <laughs> How long do we got? Uh, you don't want to it shouldn't take too terribly okay. long. Okay. Um Winter, a gay Cherokee, um, who's a who's a chatty engineer, uh he spent all of his inheritance on a ticket in this uh, dimension called, um, what is the dimension called? Uh, Cyber Nuta, um, which is kind of a not uh, affluent area. Um, and he spent all his inheritance to buy a ticket to a better dimension. Um, and while he's doing so, he has a, some contraband that he's bribed the conductor to take with him. And the contraband is um, a message with some of his personal family history, his personal story. And his flaw is he's kind of resentful of the fact that his loved ones died or his loved ones died um, to preserve their language and life and not like he, he resents the idea of the self-sacrifice that his ancestors have taken on and his inner need is to accept, embrace that responsibility and self-sacrifice and not be self-interested. Um, superpowers, he's an incredible engineer. And uh, basically, um, the incite, they're on the train and the inciting incident is Old West robbers board the train, hold everyone up, and Winter refuses to give the lockbox um, when uh, they try and take it from him. So gunfight ensues, ensues, which derails the entire train. And at this point, uh, because everything is insured, the marshals sort of says, okay, don't worry, law enforcement's going to come. But for Winter, that's unacceptable because if law enforcement comes and scrutinizes, the contraband that they were carrying will get uh, tagged and they will not, they will probably be arrested. So their objective is to get the engine started before law enforcement comes and realizes there's contraband. Um, and then we have sort of some other characters like the train robbers who come on, well, three of which are 
not are not from the uh, other dimension. They're from the 18th century. Um, and one of them is called Fuchsia Sinclair, who's a nonviolent black hat robber leader from the old west. He's he's great. And then the, there's Patrick, who is Mr. Monocle's uh, brother, who Mr. Monocle has uh, organized this uh, whole event. Wait, plot hole, shit. What? How did Mr. Monocle know they were gonna get derailed? She communicated no, with her brother. Monocle didn't want it to get derailed. Oh, Monocle, oh right, right, yeah. right, right, right. But they did know that they were gonna stop and it was gonna happen. Well, they wanted to be quiet, gotcha. She didn't know that this guy right, was gonna right, refuse right, and that. Right, yeah. right, okay, never mind. Never right. mind. Mr. Monocle is like, the, the, I just want Robbers to get on the train so that I can right, get my right. brother aboard. No, I'm, on, I'm on board. I was, yeah. I, I, I see it now. Um, the Marshal's obsessed with the law and definitely is uh, having a great day that they're going to be uh, resting some bitches. Um, lots of obstacles, lockbox stuck inside the train. The Marshal wants to wait for Central. Winter is sort of the de facto leader. He sort of gets everybody together like, come on, we've got to go and get this going. Um, we got to get the train back on track. And because the train is flipped, um, the robbers see that there's gold underlining the train, which is kind of the conductor that's allowing everything to move. And they start scrapping the train. Um, they try to stop them, but basically they go to town to get some help to save the train before the robbers scrap the train and get the train upright. Um, they have to go to a town saloon to help, uh, you know, get some help. Um, they're like, fine, as long as we can hang all the robbers which uh, Monocle doesn't want to do because her Pat Patrick, her brother's one of the mon uh, robbers. Um, we meet the sheriff who hates robbers and we also meet a Winter's ancestors who are not treated very well as a society and Winter doesn't necessarily connect with them. Um, he's more in common with people outside of his society. Um, at the midpoint, Monocle, Marshall, and everyone learned the lockbox that Winter was holding is contraband, which puts everybody into jeopardy because if one person has contraband, everybody's punished. That was my understanding, which I mm -hmm. still think is a good idea. Um, yep. yeah. And in the new, new world and the second part of act two, everybody's against winter. And um, basically winter sort of has an uphill battle there uh, as sheriff and marshal are buddy, buddy until Marshall starts killing locals who are sort of interfering with protection of evidence. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can scrap the trade because it's insured, but you can't take the lock. You can't take any thing that could be considered evidence against uh uh, you know, he doesn't necessarily explain that because I don't think we should be having a lot of this. We're from the future scenes. Um, no, <laughs> um, they get the train upright and running. Um, and at the, this moment, the marshal offers to let Winter off the hook um, and to not say the lockbox is his if he turns it in willingly. And Winter uh, sort of agrees to hand over the box, and the but the marshal immediately turns to him and was lying and. Uh, he gets left for dead by everybody and thrown off the train and the train leaves. Um, now he goes, or starts to leave anyway. And he goes back to the Cherokee people he met before they rescue him and he sort of connects to them and he sort of sees that, you know, beyond like the sort of superficial things his family sacrificed for, which maybe was the language or certain stories, it was the sort of culture of kindness and acceptance that he actually experiences in a way that's very direct that moves him to ask them for help and they help him altruistically. Um, he goes to back to save Monocle, Patrick and the robbers without sort of his own self-interest at play anymore because he knows that um, his lockbox got taken and he gets back on the train to fight the marshal, the big bad. Monocle leaves Patrick with Fuchsia because they're in love and they have a whole big thing where the, everybody gets together and beats up the marshal and law enforcement and the shitty people from the town. In the final fight, Marshall's going to destroy the train, says Winter can't do anything about it because he has the lockbox, and Winter chooses to shove the Marshall and the lockbox out of the moving train, accepting that he can carry the language, etc., and he sort of gives up that last sort of connection to his family. Uh, um, Marshall, thrown off the train, is surrounded by time locals who are fighting over who gets your, uh, jurisdiction. And then we move into this, they arrive at the new dimension, New Frisco, and everybody goes through customs and tips the chat hats at each other mo knowingly, uh, his buddy Monocle and Cherokee people get the lockbox back home. Possibly starting World War Three, Oh, World War yeah. I. <laughs> World War Zero. Yeah, World War <laughs> the real World War I. Um, Cyber World um, War Oh, There's some detail. There, there's a lot of things like I think the second half of Act Two really needs a lot of. Um, it does, <laughs> but but the bones are here. This is a pretty fun movie. Yeah. 
I like these characters, frankly. Um, yeah, that's it, the most important part. Yeah, my brother asks, is this kind of like an ensemble movie? And I think it's, it's a pretty solid example of an ensemble movie where there's a clear protagonist and antagonist, but there is a group of people where everybody really just serves a, a different purpose. We all know that Nicolas Cage has to be the marshal, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or Fuchsia. Or Fuchsia. So what's the, so your thought, Avi, was frontier was just, collision. I would just throw on that out there. I, I, oh, I love Winter, it. That's right. Yeah. Winter Getaway, my, my only concern about Winter Getaway is it makes me think about a snowy vacation, and I don't know if that's the vibe. Yeah, it's not a Western. Because people it sounds won't like know a rom-com. People won't know it's the character. Which is, like, it's fun to play on that. They call it Winter's Bone. You could do a, uh, a combination with, uh, with, with Daniel's suggestion. Frontier Collision. Oh, we lost you. <laughs> uh, What'd you say? Frontier Collision said, sounds like uh, a Mel Gibson movie from the 80s. Oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> I, I was suggesting combining it with Daniel's suggestion. So it's Frontier Collision, colon, The Journey to Cyber Frisco. Oh, that kind of fun. Let's do it. I'm into it. Okay. Oh, wow. That was our longest one yet, but um, I, I actually think this is actually probably the most creative one we've come up with. It's interesting. It Thank combines you. genres. Yeah, yeah, in a really good way. Like, it does, it's not too much sci-fi. It's enough sci-fi to do something new with a Western. Yes. So I hope you all had fun. This is, I mean, the whole point of this too, though, like two and a half hours is not that long to, to do the beat Ow. sheet for a whole freaking movie. Ow. Like you could, this is not like ready to write, but you would take no. this and you would like let it sit for a little bit and keep finessing it, really work out the second act, make sure you get this stuff in order and figure out what's happening in between these pieces. And then- Also this then goes you, faster when you're spitballing with other people. If you're doing this by yourself, like it would have probably taken me about four hours to get this on my own or something like yeah. it. Like, like I, for me personally, so just if you're doing this by yourself, certain things, the best conclusion might be takes a little bit longer. Um, right. Yeah. And but, also, I don't think any individual one of us would have come up with this story. No, like, not at all. No. It's all it's all just sort of a gamble of what ideas you actually kind of create while spitballing with other yeah. people, with yourself, yeah. like. This didn't exist until three brains came together, right? <laughs> right? That's totally true. Well, that, I, I and think, everybody I, here, because everyone here has contributed stuff that's too. True. That we would have yeah. never put in ourselves. Yeah, not to minimize anybody's contributions. There were a lot of really fun contributions in the comments. Yeah. Well, we didn't come up with inter dimension piercing train. That wasn't us. That was people here. So well, you know. no, it was Avi's idea, but they they came up with that I, um, that wording. Oh, they, that made what it was? they made it yeah. work. Okay. Yeah, they made okay. it work. They made it work. Either um, way. Very cool. And it was my idea to have a train. <laughs> That's my work. <laughs> I, also, I promise we, I will stop bringing up trains. <laughs> Don't stop bringing up trains. <laughs> we did get a gay cowboy. It just wasn't our protagonist. Right. That's true. We got two. Perfect. We got Fuchsia and Patrick. Is it a little on the nose to make Fuchsia gay? <laughs> I mean, let's just do it. Like, honestly, no, I do, do, we're doing it. We're doing it. We've done it. It's honestly, great. There is no reason why they can't all be gay. There's no reason. There's no reason they can't <laughs> all be gay. That's why true. Not? And also, he could just be like super, super rugged, and like we not know that that's necessarily the case until yeah, he doesn't Megan, like fit stereotypes. It never has to play like a contradiction. Like he never has no. to change his his mannerisms in any way. No. Just don't just don't make them a deaf ice skater. <laughs> Real upset, John. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh. Sorry, that was an inside joke uh, based on a story John likes to say. Uh, anyway. Okay. But, so good job, everybody. Thank you for coming. We're going to try to do this like once a month, a big one. Um, so if you join our Discord, which there should be links in the description for that, um, you can help us decide what we're going to do next time. Um, yeah, again, this time all we came in with was Western. Western. So here we are. <laughs> Amazing. Well, All right, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for having me again. Like the hat. Hey, oh, yeah. Partner. Partner. <laughs>